What's good? We look sexy. Y'all about to say, hold up. Let's, nah, yeah, good. Let's, let's get right. Good looking, Twin. <laughs> I'm not going to say y'all look sexy, but uh, y'all look well, guy. You uh, can say that if it's the truth. <clears throat> so, I, never in my life am I ever going to call another man sexy. Ugh. But what if he. Masculinity. Uh, I hate but it. what if he look like you? Then that's for him to decide. Uh, <laughs> all right, but. You guys can't even call each other sexy. All right, yeah. Yeah. Let's stop this podcast. Oh, I thought we were starting on no. Did we start? No. Are we recording? No. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. All right. Whenever you're ready, we rolling on All this right, side. Uh, Reggie, you want to ask that question again? Because there's no context. So what? Okay, fine. We'll give context. Okay, we'll, we'll give context. So, like, you're telling me that men can't even call each other sexy? Like, Reggie. What do you mean? How Masculinity <laughs> is so fragile. Like, what if your friend does look sexy? You can't just tell him. I mean, that's his girlfriend could, or somebody could tell him that he's sexy. But like, what, right? What does a sexy man even look like? You know. You know. I don't sexy. You know. I don't know what a sexy oh man looks God. like. Oh my God! Like he looks I, sexy. I, I don't know what a sexy man looks like. Yes, oh, you do. You I, just, I, you just I, can't say it because I, society has conditioned you not say it. I genuinely do not know what a sexy man looks but like. But what if the women tell you? Like Idris Elba. You don't, don't think he looks or sexy? Or Chris Brown. You don't feel like the women already told us they feel like he that? Nah, if, it converts differently. It converts differently to us. Because when if I hear a woman call my man or somebody that I know that's another dude sexy, it converts in my head to handsome. So, okay, so that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Like Idris Elba, you guys can't admit that he's sexy. Now you're just lying I'm to yourself. Sexy and handsome and attractive are two, three different things. Sexy oh, yeah, is like, se- oh. like, sexy is crazy. If you ever looked at a man and was like, yo, you're sexy, then, you know, maybe you and Diddy would get along. That doesn't mean you're like in love with him. You're just like, yo, he's sexy. No. I can be like, nah. Nah. He, he get women. Like, nah, yeah, there's women that really, Reggie, I can see crazy. the women bobbing with him. Like, yeah. I, can, I can say there that. We go. I have there no we go. problem giving props yeah. with this dude. If I see a dude and I know he's a snipe, I know that, that energy see each other. Say it Let's be honest. A, like, sexy men uh, is how hate is breeded for men. Why? Low key. Jealousy? Yeah. Talk to Jealousy. Yeah. For uh, sure. For you sure. start seeing it, getting all that attention. You but know? like, even I feel like I'm super attractive. I don't feel like I'm sexy. Like, I don't now look at Now, big yourself a, up, King. Sexy uh, is crazy, now, bro. Man. Sexy? You know what? You know what it takes for me to even look at a What's woman and be like, yo, sexy? she's sexiest. Like, Doesn't that's the definition a real so often. lusty type of word. Like, I've seen a lot no, of women no, like, yo, she's beautiful. She got that or whatever you want to call it. But I, I feel like sexy is a different type of like. Bust. It doesn't have to be so like, ooh, like sexy. It's like, wow, she's she's sexy. Like, it, it could be so like that. You, you know? know what it is? You just said it mad, like casual. Yeah. Sexy to me is not casual. Oh my if God. I, no, now it's this. pretty casual. Even for women. <laughs> it's like, pretty casual. Can I read the definition? Like, please. Sexy. <laughs> He always does that. Sexually attractive or excited. Savon, you've been sexually attractive and exciting for people. For sure. But she said, why don't we <laughs> We're making it so so okay. men in that it's, way? Come on. That's what she said. I feel like I'm just, I'm just making it come not on. as deep. And being a man sounds not fun. Nah, it's tough to be a man. It's, it's tough. It's tough. It's tough. It's tough. But like I said, we give we each other props saying like, yo, I, I know he, he gets a lot of women. Like, I know he does numbers. I know he does his thing. <laughs> Can you tell a look man that he's handsome or good looking without saying, yo, you look like you get bitches? I would never say any of those things to another man. I would you just can't, acknowledge okay, you it. Can't I can acknowledge it. I can. You can't tell someone like, wow, you look like you look good today, bro. You told like, your brother they look handsome before. Nah, for sure. Nah, we, what we say is, yo, that's tough. If you got a fire outfit, <laughs> nah, outfit tough, bro. Like, I see what you did there with that. Yeah. yeah I see nah, what you did. Nah. I love being a woman. I could be like, yo, you look stunning, beautiful. You look like I should kiss the floor you walk on. But you guys can't do that? No. Nah. Because then he's going to be like, fuck out of here, dick rider. How do you compliment each other? Pete, they're going to call, like, call you a dick rider. Here's another thing. You know how <laughs> women go to the bathroom even... together? Yes. Men, we don't go to the bathroom with each other together like that. Never. That's different. I'm asking if you guys can't even compliment. We can, but it's just how you go about the compliment. Without like, saying you look like you get women. Without you, saying I don't that. Have, I don't even say that to dudes. It's just that you just know when another dude is probably out here getting a lot of women. So how would you compliment him? I, I wouldn't compliment another man that, that I don't that, know. If saying. it's my friend, I'd be like, yo, you look good today, bro. Like, okay, okay, I see you boom. put that shit on. That's all I want to hear. <laughs> if it's my friend, but okay. if it's a random dude, like girls, y'all not have that thing. Yeah, yeah, y'all have a, a real easy <laughs> entry point to talking to each other. Imagine someone telling a random dude. 
<laughs> no, I completely understand why you wouldn't for a random dude. I get that. Yeah. I'll give you that. But a friend, you could be like, yo, you look good today, bro. Every single time me and Alex walk into the studio, we compliment each other. That's you a fact. Do. In some it's way, really shape, cute. or form. It's like, really cute, So guys. I can acknowledge, yo, my guy, you look good. You look like you've no, been you in guys, the gym you working out. Yo, you've been getting skinny. Skinny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's his favorite shit. <laughs> like, yo, you've been working out. Hey, that's Avon's favorite shit. He see me every week. Damn, you've been losing weight. Look at skinny. Alex, like, you know, push ups, push ups. But there's a way to go about it. It's just like a certain verbiage mm. I'm just not going to use when it comes to compliment my guy. What? That's it. Fine. That's it. Fine. Well, let, me, let me stop being annoying. All right. Yeah, for sure. And, <laughs> and honestly, this may not be the episode where we want to talk about, you know, sexy compliments and vibes uh, and all that. Like, Or this might be the episode. It's real slippery today. <laughs> where we go. I ain't going to lie. It's real slippery today. <laughs> Filled with a lot of Reggie baby oil. <laughs> Reggie going to be so tired of my analogies of baby oil and lube. <laughs> like she's No, like, my thing is because... <laughs> Stephon cracks me up because he said his baby oil lube joke in the chat already. Damn, and then Stavon. he posted it on Twitter. And then he posted it on Instagram. Stephon! I didn't do it on Instagram. She tried it. But the group chat is wow. not the timeline. You sharing jokes everywhere? Bro, the group, I, you I, mass producing a so joke? I was so proud of that joke. I get one a day. Like, it, was I, it was funny. I get one a day. It's going to take a lot of lube you to put fit on everything too. that we got to talk about. That's it. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's a fucking a, a lube crisis. It's a lot going That's on. For the people who, who didn't see what you posted, what'd you say? Yeah. Nah. I just said that, um, you know, it's going to take a lot of lube to fit in all the topics we got to discuss today. <laughs> he said that like I guess. It. <laughs> because it dead ass, like, there's a lot. The last time that we recorded, so we record, hey, what's going on, Need to Know Podcast family? Uh, it is the Need to Know Podcast. I'm going to give y'all our rundown of how we record and why I feel like there's so much to talk about. Because the last yeah. Thursday, we had Low. Shout out to Low Key. Shout out to Low Key. Low Key was in the building. Phenomenal episode. Mm-hmm. Phenomenal Thanks. stories. Good feedback. Great feedback. Good energy. It was a real, like, to me, it felt like a real podcast. And what I mean by that... Oh, what have we been doing for 200 episodes? What I mean by that... First off, we don't have a lot of guests. Oh, oh, We do have very sporadic guests. We're not guest-based. We have few and far in between. We do. And it's always based in a relationship. It's never like, oh, you're just a random person, pull up, right? There's always some kind of foundation there. Um, But what I mean by it felt like a real podcast is I remember when I was a consumer of podcasts, and whenever one of my favorite podcasts would drop and I would discover somebody new through a podcast or hear new stories through a podcast, like obviously low key, he does his thing. He's on Apple. He got Say Less. Like he he has his own motion, but I know there's a ton of people who may have got introduced to who he is and not really understanding his impact and you know, what he's done for the culture over the last decade. You know what I'm saying? So right. for yeah. me, listening back to the podcast, I was like, like, God a fan. damn. Like we like, did it justice. Yeah, yeah, like I, it felt like I was experiencing something new outside of just, yeah. you know, the bullshit and the lube and the baby oil that we do here. <laughs> <laughs> we don't do that here. <laughs> what? And, and that's what I want to make clear today. I told you about a month ago, <laughs> I'm not a freak no more. Missionary man. Missionary man. And with that being said, what's going on, y'all? Thank y'all for tuning in to the podcast. That's right. Okay. I go by the name Savon, S-A-V-O. And in the end, it's for nigga this week. Oh my god! We gonna talk about all these nasty oh, niggas. Boy. Cause I was gonna put nasty on it, but it's too nasty to get that nasty. Yeah. So the end is for nigga. And it's for niggas, yeah, crazy yeah, for sure, for sure. Hey, what up, y'all? It's your boy A as always, the Paco Ramon Poppy, never alone, always with the posse. Hello, guys. It's me, Reggie. I feel so great being here, and I just want to use this time. To tell you guys, I feel like we haven't, just because we haven't said it in like six months, please join our Twitter community. It is lit oh over God. there. I love yeah. it. And I'm only saying that because I feel like I've been getting extra love there lately. I feel like people are paying attention, like pointing out something I said and like following up. And then you'll always get a reply from me because I love the Twitter community users. We do. I just feel like it's really fun. They really pay attention. If they like the joke of ours, they compliment it. They're like, yo, this yeah. is funny. Or I disagree with this. So if you want a response out of us, go to our Twitter community. It's easy to join. It's right on our page and meet us there. Leave some there for us. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment. Also, get at us on Patreon. There are oh, yes. a plethora of new episodes over there. And uh, come participate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, before we get into everything that we got to get into, Reggie, I do want to talk about your experience at the VMAs. <gasps> oh, yes, you Reggie. Know, this podcast <laughs> is a podcast <laughs> of on. manifestation. That is how we've all gotten here Honestly. to yes. some degree. Uh, so I do want to focus on that. But um, I'd be remiss. I think we were so excited last week to have Loki in the building. Um, the news cycle has been I- extremely interesting. I could use that word for this. Interesting and sad. Quick mm-hmm. RIP to Fat exactly. Man Scoop, Rich Homie Quan, James Earl Jones, Frankie Beverly, Tito Jackson. Anyone else we are missing, we apologize. Just wanted to put that at the top for everybody. For sure. Yeah. For sure. And I, I, that's exactly where I wanted to go. Just send love, condolences, RIPs, uh, because a lot of legends and no, honestly, all of them are, are legends in their own right. Those names For that sure. you uh, listed off. So 
we do want to make sure we properly acknowledge them uh, before we get started. Um, and with that being said, last week, we record on Tuesday, guys, listeners. So yeah. listen, <laughs> we drop on Thursday, which means a lot happens within that time. So we missed out last week on talking about certain things like Shannon Sharp. Oh, Michelle. <laughs> oh, that's my Michelle. Uh, Alex. Oh, my four Reg. Reggie, my four. I forgot we you had. Right, right here. Reggie, I'm so sorry. I forgot you had headphones in. Yeah, because you was busy my looking four. at me talking about Michelle. Mm -hmm. The fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah. So last week we missed out on Shannon Sharp uh -huh. and his escapades. And I have, I, I'm not even going to say conspiracy. I just have really strong feelings about that. Oh, okay. Um, can't, wait hear, can't wait to hear them. I mean, it just shifted cool. how I look at Shannon Sharp. I think he oh, is he fucking? a part of the machine. No, I don't think he was fucking at all. For a nigga with all those muscles, I really don't. But What? Nah, you not can't have muscles and fuck. I'm with Savon. He wasn't I'm, I, putting in the work. I, I heard more Shannon than Michelle. <laughs> wait, what are you guys saying? So you're saying that he was getting fucked? Or, yeah, she or, was that, or, that, or that he was faking the whole thing. What do you mean? Both, all of it. I don't think he, I don't think he was faking it. I don't think he was faking it. I'll tell we'll, you why. We'll get there. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah I was there. like, are we gonna get into it now? Because yeah. I also yeah. have a question. But no, let's get there. I just want to set okay. everything up on why we didn't talk about Shannon. <laughs> okay. Why we didn't talk about Kendrick Lamar. And obviously this Oof. week we got the big Diddy news. But before we get into all of that stuff, I do want to highlight the good sis over here, Reggie. Yeah. Because sis. Reggie <laughs> ten years ago tweeted, and in this podcast just seems to be. Uh, the foundation has has been tweets for some reason. Yeah, what's that about? T Twitter <laughs> or X, whatever you want to call it, has been I something. Love it. I love that, that I prominent. yapped on Twitter for a decade because I have a record of everything that I've ever wanted to do. I've just tweeted every thought I've had and I always search it up and it's there it is. And I'm like, I did what I said I would. So 10 years ago, Hello. talk about that tweet, please. So the tweet that he's referencing. Okay, so I kind of, I'm glad we have a pod so I could talk about this. So the tweet he's referring to, go on my Instagram, guys, Reggie underscore Nacho, and look at my post from the VMAs. Look at it. Like it. Yes. They already did. It's good. Oh, my gosh. I ain't gonna so... lie. She took all the likes. <laughs> <laughs> that, that shit banged. Oh, my yeah, God. When I was there and I took my carpet <laughs> picture, I sent it to John. I was like, oh, my God, this post is going to bang so hard. <laughs> <laughs> you already knew. Had okay, that look so on it. Yeah. On the last slide of it, um, I, tw I screenshot a tweet from September 9th, 2014. So I was literally... Almost Damn. 10 years ago, exactly. Almost. Mark my words. I said, I said, mark my words. I'm gonna be at the VMAs one day. Might seem crazy now, but I believe in myself. A smiley face. Anything can happen if you work really hard. And I wrote, it was inspired by the Beyonce Vanguard performance that she was doing that day. So oh, that was great. And I just I don't know. I just looked up. I tweeted. I mean, I looked up in my old tweets like, hmm, let me see if I have any VMA tweets. And there it was. So I just wow. felt like it was very poetic, you know, exactly 10 years later, as my friend Kojo said, when he posted on his story, he was like, you're exactly where you said you would be. Mm. I just, you know, not so much about myself. Like the VMAs was so much fun. I love the VMAs. It's my favorite award show besides the Grammys because um, it honors music videos and creativity and all that. But um. Not so much about me, but I just want to remind people, like, just just be manifesting shit. Just be like, you know what? In ten yeah. years, I'm gonna have a mansion. I'm I'm gonna be I'm gonna have three healthy kids. Like, just think about it and really envision yourself there. It's gonna happen. Like, why not? If you're like really imagining yourself at that frequency, you're really just why can't it happen? So um, yeah. yeah, and manifesting doesn't make you cocky. Yeah, I was right? just like, I just because I'm just. It's not like I'm like, oh, I'm gonna be at these award shows looking hot, like better than you guys. Like, <laughs> no, I'm really, shit, yeah. it was just about me, like something I wanted and that I really wanted to live out in my dreams and stuff. So it's really about you. So it's not cocky at all. Yeah, you're just really like confident in yourself. And sometimes the dream or the aspiration has to be kind of like borderline delusional. Yeah, but or else, look, like, anything yeah. can happen. Yeah, yeah. You gotta think 10 years ago, an Asian girl from Jersey saying, hey, I'm gonna be at the VMAs. That's a little delusional. And <laughs> back then, no, no, no. I think it's fully delusional. No, I, I think the key yeah, to yeah, manifesting yeah. your dream life is just being delusional. Uh -huh. Right. But I think people's connotation of delusional is kind of bad. But a good delusional is like, oh my God, let me think of this wildest thing. But it's not bad because it really can happen though. Yeah, so, really and me at 2014, I just graduated high school. So I wasn't like professional in the field yet. I was doing my little blogs, my music blogs. Yeah. That's where I was. And I, like this... Need, Okay, honestly, so I kind of set it up. I, this is my fault. I feel uh, like the comments, it made it seem like because I included that sentimental tweet, people thought that that was my first time going to the VMA. Oh, you felt you felt slighted like, <laughs> no, bitches. I've been I didn't here. say that, but literally <laughs> pinned on my Instagram is the time I went in 2022. But okay, I, that's, yeah, a, that's yeah. a stupid thing to bring up. Like, it doesn't really matter. But 
Thank you for the love. But in this, in this capacity, it, yeah. it seemed, and you could tell me if I'm wrong, it seemed just a little bit different this time around. It did feel great. It, it you seemed, look more comfortable. You look comfortable. Yeah. You look great. Um, you look that. like you was in the suite. You know I love a good suite. Yeah. Yo, you know I, I love. love a great yes. suite. Like, <laughs> being in the suite jades my live experiences. Like, <laughs> it's tough to go to a football game. The, the like, I'm, going to a game I'm going to a game tonight, actually. And yeah, Really? For sure. What well, game are you going to? What? Uh, Patriots Jets. I got to go support. You know oh. what I'm saying? I'm, I'm still, I'm still so, gang gang. So Wait, Reggie, what are you talking about? Wait, Reggie, what do you mean going? What I'm he's going to a game tonight. What, Reggie, what he's trying to but say. Like... No, no, no. He's right. <laughs> he's, there's a game tonight, Reggie. It's Thursday. What Reggie. he's trying to say. Oh, <laughs> what he's trying to say is I'm an idiot. me and him are rivals today. For sure. Oh. I'm a Jets fan, him the Patriots yeah. fan. Awkward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you are opt today. Yeah. I'm in a building. I just want to say, I'm sorry, guys, but th those white people, they know how to have fun. Now they do, don't no, they? No, at the VMA, the most fun, <laughs> the most fun part, and you know, it could be a lot deeper saying like, oh, they're prioritizing pop more, blah, blah, blah. That's not what we have to focus on. But honestly, like, it was very white teenage girl focused, but that yeah. shit was fun. Like, Sabrina Carpenter, Katy Perry, like, their performances were really fun. See? Um, well, Glow really killed it. Meg killed it, but yeah. See, it's fun when you don't got to catch the beat. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> like when, you, when you don't care about catching the beat, they were on beat. Uh, <laughs> don't worry, ladies. Like, I got you. Oh, it was. <laughs> nah, because you know when you don't care about catching the beat, you just flowing. Facts. You just, ever seen Taylor just Swift living her life? Shit? Like, she just living with her billions. Yeah. She don't know what's going on. Yeah. So, what, give us a little bit of tea. Give us a little bit of insight. Like, what was it like for the people who can't get into the building? Just like, looking for the I tea. Get it. Or just who was you excited to see? Did you get to meet anybody? I know. And shout out to the security. Guy that was working at the VMAs. I know you oh, tapped yeah. into the podcast. So you said that. Oh my gosh. Yes. What's his name, Greg? I don't know if I caught it. It's in the Damn video. Much. I'm sorry, guys. Because I didn't, I mean, I didn't want to share it because he yeah. said he didn't know if he should he could share it that oh, night. So then of work I kind of yes, nah, but, but his I was, name was like I, I was know. walking out. Steven. Um, and Ronald. then <laughs> we can't just call him whatever. <laughs> nah, Ron. What they're referring to is I was walking out, and then a guy who worked at the VMAs was like, wait. Are you on a podcast? Need to know. I was like, oh my God, this is so crazy. Wow. We, have, we actually have listeners. But I don't know. It's just, it's really, really, really fun. I went there for work purposes, like to cover it and then, you know, do recaps and do the red carpet. The red carpet sucked, by the way, because of the way everyone agreed. Oh, I saw Jordan there, Jordan Shout Rose, Jordan the, the face of complex. Yes. And even he agreed. Well, I don't know if I'm putting mm -hmm. him on blast, but he was like, um, like, yeah, the red carpet wasn't that great. They set us up in like a weird spot. So all the celebrities kind of just skipped it they only took their pictures but um that was also really poetic too because i remember jordan's first red carpet at syracuse mm -hmm. like just seeing how great he was and then now years later we're working stuff together so just a lot of sentimental shit that night <laughs> <laughs> just so, full circle moments for real. just to kind of piggyback off of what you were saying earlier when it came to like yeah. the whites just you know having a great time having an amazing time man yeah you know like you just gotta have fun sometimes. yeah that little dance they be doing when you go to the vmas you you know because you did go and the, it is the video music awards so i do want to run down some of the winners and then i want to kind of transition yeah. into the emmy shout out to the emmys too but um, the video of the year was Taylor Swift featuring Post Malone for Fortnite. That is the name of the song. Word? Yeah, she won, she won an award. I gotta go see that. You never saw that? <laughs> no. Okay. Artist I never of... saw the video of the year. Nah, but I'm gonna give you the trend. Just listen <laughs> okay, to okay. the trend. Just I, listen to the trend. I, Be I, amazed. Who hosted? Meg? Meg, Meg the Stallion. Meg the Stallion. Yep. Shout out to Meg. Yo, Meg is a commercial. I don't think she's an artist anymore. You mean she's just a walking no, ad? Bro, like a walking I don't know her. Yeah, she does a lot. I, she just is everywhere, everywhere but on the radio. Yeah. No, she did. No, no she did. She did. Shame. She did. No, I'm dead ass. But she she's getting money. She's doing her thing. I'm not even mad at it. But anyway, yeah. um, artist of the year for the VMAs. Um, the category was was steep. I will give it that. But there was only one black artist, and cool, whatever. That's their whatever. Uh, so we had Taylor Swift. She was the winner. Uh, but Ariana Grande, Bad Bunny, Eminem, Sabrina Carpenter, and SZA were the nominees, and Taylor Swift won. No surprise there. Any arguments there? I mean, she did a lot Alex, this year. I know you want to fight for Eminem right now. You want to fight for SZA, nigga. Uh, <laughs> because you talk about. <laughs> um, what else? Song of the year was "Expresso" by Sabrina Carpenter. Um, we oh, also wow. got salute to her. Her that, album is everywhere. Best collaboration was Taylor Swift and Post Malone yet again. Uh, best pop artist was Taylor Swift oh yet again. Uh, best hip hop now. Hip hop is us. It Damn. gotta be us. It gotta be us. But wait. There's more. Up. No. Best hip hop, Eminem. All right. Wait, what? All right. Nah, for real. Best hip hop. I didn't watch it. So hearing this right now is kind of like, wait, what is going on? Best hip hop song, okay. Eminem. Uh, best R&B song now. 
It's now, us. guys, so we go. We got come this. on. We got this. One. We got this one. Yeah, it's in the bag. Let's give a round of applause. We got this one. Goddamn, come got on, this one, right? All right, yeah. the you scared me. We got this one. Okay. R&B. All right, thank God you scared me. Um, I thought you was going out to say Teddy swims. But I will also <laughs> say this: the VMAs is very unpredictable because we listed all of these categories, and there was a trend there. But it does seem like they respect reparation because the best rock <laughs> song of the year. Oh yes. Best rock song of the year. Not Bon Jovi, who was a candidate. Best rock video, by the way. I'm so sorry. Best rock video. Not Bon Jovi. Not Coldplay. And neither was Green Day. These are some heavy hits. Oh, legend. No, they're in the category. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This oh, is the category. Okay, okay, okay. okay. I thought you was two? Off names. Okay. Like, these are legends. I'm never going to forgive you two for what they did in my Apple phone. Fast. That was actually like a violation. Yeah. Like, I'm never going to forgive you. Of them for our that. human rights. Now, that was yes, some Reggie. shit for real. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> but <laughs> the best rock video was Lenny Kravitz. Woo! Come on, let's give it up. Black. All right, shout out to Lenny. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Lenny, my man. So I guess the trend for the VMAs this year was, you know, just go the other way. Just swap it. Just flip it around. Just go the other way. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I will say this, though. There was a budget behind the uh, VMAs this year. Okay. Reggie, mm -hmm. maybe you can speak to it because you were actually there. From what I could see at home, some money was spent. Yo. I love the sets. And I learned about some new white artists that I can't remember. There but the was, music was good. <laughs> walking in, there was a ginormous astronaut. Like this one? Like this one right next to you? But like ginormous, like the size of like a skyscraper. Big really? Deal. Yes. Oh my God. Damn. So crazy. Yeah, they had a little budget. Whew. That's fire. I mean, it was fun, but you know, it's always going back and forth with like how much approval do we need from these, you know, award shows. And then when we oh, do yeah. get them, we're like, oh my God, yay. So sure. I mean, just the, to wrap it up, good job, VMAs. And also manifest, guys. Manifest. Picture your life in 10 years. Truly believe you're going to be there. Facts. You will be there. So they thought because they put Meg Thee Stallion on, that was the only black representation we needed, huh? Lenny. Well, Lenny. We had Glorilla. We had also, Lenny. Tyla. Uh, you know, that opens Tyla. up a whole can of worms. We don't have to get into it, but you know, she was definitely, her presence was definitely known because there was a lot of conversation after. She won Best Afrobeat <sighs> Video. Yo, Afrobeat man. Let's go. I'm going to say this. <laughs> Missionary I'm a, man. I'm going to say this because I'm a I'm an African American for real. <laughs> Why do you say it like that? Nah, because because I'm fake. I'm an American because I'm fake. No, no, you yeah. you black. <laughs> I'm black. That's a fact. That's you a black. black. No, the way he's like, like no, 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 no. I will say this right because I, I can see both sides. Uh, what Reggie's alluding to is how people are perceiving Tyler, right? Mm -hmm. I think what is, what are the words that they're calling her, Reggie? That she, I, I don't want to say it. Colored. No, but no, no. I don't no. think it's a colorist thing, but she, 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 she seems like she's above other people. Pretentious, right? pretentious, right? Uppity. Uppity. Oh, okay, we don't gotta say all that. But let's just say. <laughs> no, that, that's what they're calling okay. her. If they say other we'll African, we'll say that. You know, you call me nigga. <laughs> yeah, uppity just say African. what they call her. I'm, I'm African. I can say uppity, uppity African. That's I'm, what they're saying. By I, the I, way. These are my, I can't really say this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but this is what I will say, right? We. Uh, how do I say this correctly? Say it. The culture is different. The culture is different, and, and Africans really feel grateful to get opportunities in the States. So I think that creates a disconnect between how both cultures mesh with each other or how they perceive how each other talk, right? So I could, I'm could i not mad at the people that are saying, yo, she's kind of throwing me off for a loop a little bit. I can't really put my finger on her. I'm not mad at that because as an African, I had to grow up in that shit, and it can it can feel a little bit judgmental at times. I'll say that. I think that's all all non Caribbean or, culture yeah, sort of right. Culture. Yeah, yes. Cardi B yeah. actually said that too. She's like, yo, it, they just act like she was referencing her own sisters yeah. and you know like stuff like that. So. Yeah, like Nigerians, we are proud people. Mm -hmm. Same. I, I, I'm not hate, South African, but I can speak to being Nigerian. We are proud people. Sometimes we don't realize how we come off. Like very confident, very, very confident in ourselves, yeah. but we don't use it to try and slight you, even though it might sound like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're just happy. Us being confident in ourselves is what helps us. Mm -hmm. I think the yeah. most confident Caribbean is Jamaicans. They're up there. Yeah. Very prideful. Very, prideful. Very, prideful. Very prideful. Yeah. For See, sure. if, I was Jamaican, everybody. if I was Jamaican, I'd be proud too. So shout out to them. See, yes. that's why I'd be tough being black American. Because like, don't what's my this. flag? Nah, what's huh? my flag? You black. Know, I don't got a flag. There's man. literally, isn't there literally a flag? Yeah. You got a, it's a flag, bro. There's literally a <laughs> black flag, bro. Y'all not go, y'all not go make me break down the it's science green. of being a black American. <laughs> Don't make me call Dr. Umar. You know what it look like? It's green, green red, red, and black. But you asked us, is there a flag? You got a flag. You celebrate Kwanzaa? Nah. I don't. Nah, he don't. Nah. I don't. I'm like real black American. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> that's the like, fucked up part. It's so funny because he just, when you said that, it looks so sad. I'm like, what do I have? Because that's how I be feeling at the parades, bro. Like, I just be on my Drake shit. I just got to go to any culture I can. Like, just yeah. take me, bro. Love me. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Love me. With that being said, though, um, not only was it the VMAs last week, but the Emmys uh, was this past week. Shout out to the Emmys. Yeah. We don't have to stay too long here, but um, I think that, that there was a lot of shows that won. Uh, Shogun. I don't know if y'all familiar with the series Shogun on FX. Shout out to the Asians. Shout out to the Asians. You know what I'm saying? We got to highlight Africa, Asia, and America. You get yep. what I'm saying? We go do it all. Uh-huh. Uh, but Shogun, they they really went crazy. Best drama at the Emmys this year. Fire. Um, I keep saying I'm going to watch that show, but so I have not me? yet. What do you have against the Asians? Yeah. You know. Asian hate? Don't speak do that. speak your truth. I don't have anything. Y'all watched it? No, that means? Yeah, I was about to say, like, nah, Reggie, watch have you watched it? But I'm just fuck? inherently supportive of the Asians. It's okay, but you for sure, for sure. need to. Well, I started. Watch it. I started with bigging up Shogun, so I think I'm I'm on the right foot. Fine. With that being said, <laughs> we also had Hacks. Shout out to Max HBO. Oh uh, yeah, Hacks a comedy, hilarious. Uh, we also did a podcast for that. Uh, make sure y'all go check that out too. It's really dope. But Hacks on Max won best comedy at the Emmys. Um, and oh, you know what really swept. The bear. The bear. The bear Ooh, went I saw, crazy. Wait, I saw a little controversy because it was in the comedy category, wasn't it? It yeah. wasn't comedy. But is it a com? It's is, both. I've watched. Is it a? It's it's, a it's it's more of a drama. Yeah, dramedy. because I mean, yes, yeah, dramedy. Yeah, dramedy. But the thing people were saying was like, was like, it is taking away from the true comedy shows, though, like Abbott and stuff. Right. So it yeah. could. It, it definitely could. Yeah. Uh, but Jeremy Allen White is also known as Lip on the show Shameless. I don't know how many of y'all tapped into Shameless. Shameless. Classic I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a huge Shameless fan. Uh, to see him get his recognition, I think he's a dope actor. Um, I know he's going through some personal things too, like with substance abuse and all that kind of stuff. Is he? Uh, he was at some point. Oh, okay. I don't know where he is today. Hopefully he's doing well. Uh, but it was just really nice to see like the Emmys and the VMAs over the last week. Like It kind of restored that feeling of what it was for me a decade ago when you just kind of knew what was happening with the award shows. Like mm-hmm. today... You don't hear anything about award shows. So for me to kind of be tapped into that, I, I felt like it was cool to kind of highlight that. Not for real. I didn't even know the Emmys was occurring until it was on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I bet. I bet. I bet. <laughs> don't I bet me, nigga. I watch shows. You do. More I than watch me. mad more than shows me. and I had no idea. Honestly, you, you watch yeah. more shows than me. And no one thing about the Emmys and that we can kind of just pivot on to what really happened the night of the VMAs. Mm-hmm. Um, but the Emmys also give you a, a nice kind of snapshot of some of the shows you may have missed. Right. So for me, a lot of times when I say, like, damn, this category cleaned up or this actor or this show cleaned up, I'm going to go back and I'm going to check it out for me personally. So, yeah, um, yeah VMAs, Emmys, uh, what a time to be alive whenever Kendrick Lamar decides to drop music. Literally which he did that night. Mm. On the night of the VMAs. Mm. He dropped music and he didn't even put a title on it. <laughs> Watch the party die. Wait, do you think it was intentional that he dropped it right when the VMA started? Or no, nah, he probably didn't care, right? I, I I never thought about that, but I wouldn't be surprised. Wait, because isn't the subject matter? I'm sorry, I'm fast forwarding a little bit. No, the good. subject matter kind of mm-hmm. has to do with the industry and stuff. We could delve in later, but maybe he did that during a major award show. Let's delve in now. How did you guys feel about it when y'all first heard it? So when I first heard Watch the Party, so the thing about Kendrick is we all know he's super strategic at this point. And so he just dropped the link and he just allows us to like decide what is happening. He doesn't give any context, <laughs> kinda, right? Yeah. Honestly, like, I kind of like that. This could be whatever we want it to be. It's one of those things like when yeah. Eminem said, I am whatever you said I am. And if I wasn't, then why oh, would you I say I am? Right? right. Like. That's kind of how Kendrick moves. It's like, whatever you want this song to be, whoever you want it to be about, is what it's about. So when he dropped it, I immediately sent it to the group chat. And I said, oh my God, guys, he's dissing again. Right. That was people's immediate reaction, though. And I didn't know who he was dissing. Yeah. But it was one of those things, if the shoe fits, then kind of wear it, right? Like, Mm -hmm. a lot of the lines apply to... The Drake situation that we seen he just came out of. Yeah. But there was also a lot of messaging that seemed to apply to the industry as a whole. But I don't like how people are acting delusional as if he wasn't talking to Drake on, on Yo, those lines. That's why I love you. I don't know why people are acting like this. I don't know what's going on. It's mad weird. I think two things can be true. I Like Savon just said, I think he was trying to speak to the industry and what's to come. And I have some more commentary on that. But there's only one person Kendrick Lamar walked down this year. <laughs> yeah. I was so confused when I saw the rhetoric that this week or last week. I'm like, 
Am I being pranked? Hmm, <laughs> Who okay. else could he be talking about? But you off that? Hmm. Is it like okay? I do think that parts of the song, yeah, not the whole, definitely thing. apply to like definitely That's apply what to I'm Drake. Saying, Reggie, yeah. Okay, but we're all, we're all agreeing that it wasn't like a Drake this song. Not a, yes, we can all agree. Okay, to okay that that's, it, that's it. That's Absolutely. it. Okay, it's okay. just the parts where he was shooting at Drake. People it was like, clearly Drake. Yeah, yeah. And people are like, no, nah, he wasn't talking about Drake. He was just talking about anyone. I'm like, guys, it's okay. I don't understand. But when I did hear it, right. Because I grabbed the exact same thing that you guys grabbed, right? All right, cool. It sounds like it's going to be a reborn. Things have to be built again. He sounds really angry. All right, the party, maybe the party is the industry, but that's where I got stumped a little bit. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know what exact industry Kendrick Lamar is speaking to. Mm. Is, is, it, is it the music industry that's coming to a burn and has to be rebuilt again? Or is it all entertainment industries across the board? I'm a little confused because, and again, I don't have any fight. I have no, no, no fighter in this race, right? But when I see you still align with the Super Bowl, which is okay, he deserves it. He had a great year. Right. I, I don't know what the party is then. Maybe it's just the music industry. And mm -hmm. I hope he, I know he's going to elaborate more on the album. Yeah. But I was stumped. I'm like, but what is Oh, because you're literally, <clears throat> I think this, like the message of the song clearly is yeah. the whole like, some revolution within him or, and like he wants people to join him like do you guys agree with me let's go yeah. let's fight like I think overall that definitely is the message mm -hmm. of the industry and yeah I'm, I'm just thinking like industry? I'm just like thinking in real time as you mentioned that I'm like yeah. oh wait you kind of but you're the headliner for the Super Bowl the biggest which is music, okay you music. deserve it no yeah, yeah I, I loved right. it but I'm saying like so when you drop a song like this and then participate in the biggest music performance of the year. What does yeah. that mean? Right. Or is he gearing us up for some, him doing something crazy on that stage? Yeah. Like, on, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I was just going to play a, a, a snippet from the song. And then, again, this is mad random. I'm not even going to lie to you. Yeah. Like, I didn't know. <laughs> like, I just picked a, a part. Random part. Got I you. typed in Kendrick, Drake, watch the party die. And let's play it. Oh, I got it now. I got it now. So with that part right there, it's almost undeniable to say, like, that's Drake. Yeah. Right? That's, oh, am I off? No, no, no. That That's right. I see what you're saying. I wasn't even thinking about Drake. I was thinking about what I was just saying about who was he speaking to. I think he's speaking to all industries, but it's the people who are currently in these seats that are bringing these industries down. Like the mm -hmm. corporate guys. Right. You know, just the specific people who are in the seat right now is what needs to probably be uh, flushed. Mm -hmm. It sounds like he really wants like a restructuring. Yes. Like, yeah. they, like they don't have, like the industries don't have to completely come down, but definitely a restructuring, a retooling, new people. Like when he said, I want his head cracked before he goes back home. Yeah. It sounds like he's talking to a Canadian. Me, personally. And again... My, my, like, What's we don't it? know what he's saying or who he's talking to. He yeah. only gives it to us to be on some Eminem shit. I am whatever you say I am. Yeah. Right? So he is whatever I think this to be and what it is to mean. And to me, when he says, yo, I, I sent him back home mm -hmm. and I want to leave his head cracked, it sounds like he's talking to Drake to me. And <laughs> like what are we talking about? Mm. You know what I realized about this as well? People don't really like rap. They like hip hop culture. Because you should be able to digest the rapidy rap stuff and still enjoy the fun shit within hip hop. But a lot of the commentary when this song was released was, oh my God, it was so boring. I got put to sleep. <laughs> and I'm like, so you guys can't digest both? You guys can't enjoy both? Either has to be one or the other? But who is saying that, though? Oh my Mad God, people. it's so boring. But like, uh, those aren't those aren't hip-hop fans, though. Like, clearly. That's, like... Well, they'll claim to be. That's what I'm saying. I, I think they're fans of hip-hop culture, okay. not rap. 
right? I think there are a new breed of rap fans or hip hop fans who, if you're getting too rapidly rapidly and giving me too many bars and too many metaphors, I'm clocking out. It's sleepy to me. And I only enjoy like the fun shit, which is cool, but you don't really like rap then. <laughs> I think initially it was it was the it, it was kind of like lower vibrational on the beat. On, for me personally on the beat when I heard it I it's was a like great I, beat nah it was good <laughs> yeah. but at the same time it wasn't like it didn't catch me catch me but after a while I was like alright let me settle in you right. have to, you have to come to the point where you're like okay let me listen to what he's actually saying mm -hmm. cause right now again people Ice Spice for example right people will hear her songs listen to the beat and then they'll say it's fire because the beat catches them but if you really sit down and listen to what she's saying it like it doesn't really it doesn't really hold much value like, yo like i i'm sorry to reignite whatever what I, I don't know if people care anymore but the whole lotto and ice spice thing recently lotto summed it up so like so well she was like she was imitating ice spice she's like i don't know it kind of sounds like i'm so cute <laughs> like that, that, that's what she be sounding like like yeah, i like yeah. ice spice i do listen to it but like right. honestly <laughs> like i just say that because of what pierre is saying like she you know her bars are very like simple yeah yeah, yeah. And to Savon's point, there was only one person that most of the industry was talking about saying that, yo, he sleeps with our women mm -hmm. <laughs> and he does things behind closed doors and he pillow talks, right? Or he, just one side. Dirty I remember, back. Right, yeah. Like, yeah. I remember, wasn't it 40 that was pillow talking? And that's kind of what ignited the whole beat between him and Pusha? Mm -hmm. So again- That's how uh, Pusha T got his information. That's how he got his information, right? Mm -hmm. so allegedly, 40 was pillow talking. No, it ain't alleged. Oh, it ain't alleged, I right? was in the room when Pusha T said okay. what he said. There we go. So Ooh, Pusha complex, said complex, complex. Right. Yes. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, my confusion <laughs> when people were like, oh, I don't know who he's talking about or he's not talking about him. I get it though. On one of those diss tracks, he said, if our catch flight is going to be direct, mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. That's understood. We get it. I think he's been more than direct mm -hmm. as of recently, though. And I'm sure he just used that as a metaphor to a bigger problem. And also, I think when he put something out like this after announcing the Super Bowl, he's smart enough to know, like, if I directly state whoever it is that I'm talking about, and if it happens to be Drake, that's going to overshadow the message, right? Yeah. So I'm still going to allow you to that's understand who I'm talking to, mm -hmm. like... Use your brain. I've been dissing this nigga all year. This is what we're talking about. What are we talking about? I've been dissing this nigga all year. Talking about one nigga. Use your fucking brain. I don't need to say his name every time I'm gonna diss him. Come on, y'all. But for me to do this and for me to say whatever it is that I'm gonna say, yes, you. It's obvious who I'm talking about. In addition to saying the infrastructure needs to be destroyed and and rebuilt, like a lot of the times, for you to really build something up, you got to destroy it. You got to mm -hmm. destroy something before you could like put it back yeah. in, the, in, in, the, in, the, in the pieces. You know what I'm saying? So I agree. it could be a, a, a dual messaging when it comes to Kendrick, when it comes to this song. I think I, I love the delivery. I, I love and going back to what you said, a lot of people don't love the artistry of hip hop and rap. They just want to hear songs. They just want to hear music. They, they want, just want, they want the women. They want the fly want, shit. Yeah. But when it comes to rap actually spitting bars, I'm realizing, yeah, oh, people yeah. don't like rap. And it makes <laughs> it, and it makes people uncomfortable because and it, and it's very it's, it's weird because I I feel like and I know a lot of people they're gonna kill me in the comments and that's fine and that's cool I see it all the time we used to it right <laughs> but I think it is very regional and I think it is very situational when it comes to how we um, digest and interpret music and what I mean by that is I see a lot of athletes talking about music and podcasts or on podcasts I should say. And a lot of their takes, and again, they're athletes, their profession is not anything to do with music or entertainment, but a lot of athletes come from different regions of the United States that aren't, let's just say New York, for example. And now I know we're a little bit biased, cool, kill me, whatever, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> but what I do care about is, or what I do pay attention to is what it is they're speaking to. And it's like, oh no, you're comparing the NBA young boys to the Lil Wayne's. Right, there isn't a real. Comp That's the thing. You haven't seen that. Who put, put a name on that bullet? Who did that? Just niggas. Just niggas. <laughs> I seen niggas. Shout out to my son Zaire. Zaire, we saw you. Oh wait, hold up. Zaire said that. Yeah, Zaire said nah, that. I thought That's that was Jeff T. Nah, that was nah, Zaire. Nah, Zaire. Yo, that wait, was he Jeff. compared. Wait, he compared NBA young boy to the Lil Wayne. <laughs> one one of the the arguments was I don't hear a lot of the older artists compared to how I hear uh, Gunna or NBA young boy, right? And it's not just Zaire. Zaire is one of the people who have said that. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't fault him for saying that. I know Zaire is from Philly. Yes, yeah, a Philly I, dude. Right. I, don't, I don't knock him for saying that. But what I will say is, I feel like 
the mm-hmm. is hard mm-hmm. because I think it stems from maybe even yo know, your quote unquote OGs, right? Like my the people that raised me, my OGs kind of introduced me into understanding like what hip hop is. Like I may not ever listen to KRS One, but I know and I really understand the value of a KRS One. Mm-hmm. And then the Jada Kisses and the Mace. Like when people get online and they try to diss Mace and Cam. Because they're not familiar with Mason Cam. Oh yeah, you get what I'm saying. Like, like do you know what you're uh, talking you about? Do your research. You don't Missed the whole really era. understand. <laughs> you have no idea where it derives from, and yeah. I think a lot of people kind of miss that. Like, there's a gap mm-hmm. from that era to this era where I feel like people are just saying what it is that they may think, and not really what it is that they should know. Because hip hop doesn't require you mm-hmm. to have an education. Yeah, and, and 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 it should be centered around the artistry, not the numbers, right? Like, I'm not mad at a person. Well, I am. I in am the a, history, and in the history, right? absolutely, right? But it, it goes to about hip hop culture, right? Like, we see these acts who are super large, right, in fan base, but they don't have the necessary, not the KRS, Rock, Kim sort of flow. So when people see them, they go, "Okay, cool. This artist is really huge without having to do these sorts of rap styles." So mm-hmm. I'm naturally gonna gravitate to that. Subconsciously, they don't even know. Mm-hmm. You the other, realize the, other, the other thing too is how music is consumed now versus back then. With the you know introduction of Instagram, I mean, I know CDs were still a thing back then, but at the same time, we have literally iPhones that have music libraries te- yeah. filled with with Plus music. Or- Right at the um, you know, at the access of our fingers. So if I want to pull up an album now or an artist, you know, now especially I could you know do that at will. Yeah. Versus back then you couldn't really do this much. And my last point, I think we can all agree here that right. Kendrick was speaking to a bigger message, right? Yeah. On that song, but they were shots at Drake. What happened to OVO Fest, yo? Wait, I don't know. So <laughs> they no. took a break, just like uh, Made in America. No. Everybody taking a break because they get that- hot. When the heat get turned up in the kitchen, they can oh, take a break. You. I thought he was going to use it as his opportunity to... Do his comeback. To do what? Not a comeback, but at least get a little petty. Mm, or do can, something. Or just do something in your... Because that's, that's a yearly thing for him. You mean to tell me the rap beef is the reason why he didn't do OVO Fest? It's supposed oh, to be yeah. in August. It's supposed to... No, right? October. You mean. Oct- oh, oh. No, oh. I think OVO no, Fest I, was August. I think it was oh, in August. My bad. Yeah, I thought yeah, it was yeah, October's yeah. very own. Sorry. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, no, it was usually in August, I think, yeah. so I was waiting for August to pass. Nothing has come as of late. Uh, I don't know if he has anything planned, but I thought he was going to use it as his opportunity to do something. I, I did want to highlight that. Or at least, even if he didn't acknowledge... You know how he's been doing his thing about like yeah. about not acknowledging that he lost the beef and just kind of moving <laughs> yeah. on with his life? Yeah. Or at least, I thought he could have used OVO Fest to kind of feel some love around him yeah. for once. Exactly. Like this year. Like, you know what? Let me throw a fest where the people who celebrate me and love me are going to show are gonna up come and show out. Yeah. In Toronto. Absolutely. Damn. Get petty with me. I don't know. I don't know. Did y'all Damn. see the conspiracy of the plot twist Instagram page? No. No. Well, I love a good conspiracy. So you know how... Oh, yes, Savon, go. The plot twist yes. uh, Instagram page that we all believe is to be Drake. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The conspiracy is that the plot twist of it all is that this is actually a Kendrick Lamar camp-led page. Meaning... Oh, I hear this one. Wait. The, Okay, go first. I don't know. Okay, the, and again, I don't. I don't I'm know. I, this, this this is a conspiracy. I'm, this is not my conspiracy. Yeah, I saw yeah, this shit on Twitter. Yeah. I gotta find a person to give credit to. But yeah. what they're saying is, the whole plot twist of that whole Instagram page is somebody on the behalf of Kendrick Lamar or maybe his camp or a fan of his has compiled all of these clips and all of these songs and is leaking it through this page. And the plot twist is. Nah, nigga, we got you. Like, got you. Like, it's one of those moments. That's the whole reason behind the quote unquote Wait, plot really? twist. Who's page. the gotcha? Like, who's who's saying the gotcha? Kendrick is saying gotcha to Wait, Drake. But but, I, I'm and so again, confused. it's a conspiracy and it's not mine. No, no, you're right. But because ahead. but Drake follows the Instagram and promotes it yeah, regularly. That, so clearly he likes it. Yeah, that's why that's kind of easy to, to debunk. Mm-hmm. But we shared something in the group chat earlier today. And I think we got some clarity on why 100 gigs was released on Meta or Instagram, of course, right? I think we should give more credence to that. Say, when I just sent you the clip. Long story short, Drake and UMG, they are slated to do some big numbers because they've reached a deal with Meta. Mm-hmm. I didn't know UMG and Meta was reaching a deal. Could you play for me? Breaking news, Universal strikes a deal with Meta to use Universal product across 
all of Meta's platforms, including WhatsApp, which hasn't been done before. See that? Um, they also slipped in there See in that? the fighting for artists' rights department, a uh, crackdown that on so AI-generated material that uh, uses unauthorized music from uh, Universal's artists. You know what's still so interesting to me, though, is like with the TikTok deal, they don't give us any information of how it benefits artists. We know it's going to benefit the, the labels through rev shares and advertising and all of this. But when it comes down to it, Artists don't get a lot of money from these streams. I mean, I recently had a song with Nate Dogg that did 250 million streams on uh, uh, TikTok. And it's not how many times they uses, used it. It's how many accounts used it. So maybe 40,000 people. Oh, they switching the, the game up. See what I'm saying? Collectively and I'm glad we got They changing the game up. Because completely. before it used to be how many times it gets streamed. How many, how many times are you going to listen to my song is how I get paid. But now you're telling me it doesn't matter how many times you listen to my shit. Yeah. It matters how many accounts. Right. And now we kind of get some, some clarity and some, you know, some clearance on why Drake was releasing on Instagram, right? There were conspiracy theories going out saying, oh, maybe Drake is at odds with UMG mm -hmm. because he's releasing music straight to Instagram as opposed to just uploading it, right? It was the but opposite. It was a complete opposite. The whole time UMG and Drake was in on it. And this is just a reminder that all the rich folk are living in the future and we find out last. Yeah. yeah. That was good to get some clarity Ooh, on that. that was a mic drop. Hello. Yeah, so it's like, Oh, because of this deal. That's why Drake has been freaking Releasing. blowing up Instagram yeah. and putting his songs only and, on Instagram. Yeah. Kendrick too. Yeah, and Kendrick. Is Kendrick under UMG? Because why is Kendrick doing these Instagram Interscope, releases? Right, uh, PG Lang. <clears throat> and maybe we, we should do some research because I do know um, TDE was Interscope. I don't know the affiliation between Interscope, uh, UMG, PG Lang, all that stuff. But it is interesting nonetheless. Because they both have released songs Kendrick, on Kendrick signed Instagram. a publishing deal in 2020 with UMG. Wait, and Kendrick dropped more on YouTube. He dropped his singles on YouTube first, right? He, Not Instagram? No, he it, dropped he everything dropped on, both. He dropped both, yeah. Both? He's, Remember he was posting on his Instagram pages and shit? Mm -hmm. Oh, I That's always how saw we got it on the imagery. YouTube. Oh, okay. you never saw the Instagram? Yeah, no, he was no, posting. No, he was uploading right to Instagram. Oh, are they... Are uh, Is UMG doing this with Meta? Because they want to take down the streamers like Spotify and them, or no? We that's, don't know. We don't know. And I don't know. That's like a very good question. Like shift the power towards them, right? And kind of take because um, Drake and Kendrick, there were significant releases that they didn't put on streaming anywhere, like Apple Music, right. Spotify, and, and we don't know the benefits that they're grabbing from that, right? So yeah. now when we see a Drake song debut at sixty, we looking at it like, damn, Drake, you done dropped. And we don't even know the terms and deals that was discussed yeah. on the back end mm -hmm. as to what he felt like. No, that was actually a win for me. Like and he may yeah. not give a fuck yeah. about going 60 because he, yeah. he's pro promoting this new rollout right. of, hey, let's drop music on Instagram because these are the dealings happening yeah. behind the scenes. So for him, it's like, I'm just going to drop the music. Wherever it lands, it lands. Yeah. But you got introduced to the music on Instagram, which is where UMG wants you to go right. to listen to new music. That's their play. But and, and, uh, we just don't know. I wonder what like the configuration is. I know a stream uh, counts that not a stream a um a, I think it's every every thousand two hundred listens is a stream or something like that. I forget the logistics I, on it because it, cha it changes so much. Like, so now imagine it's in that on, ballpark though. Yeah, and now imagine on Meta what it is if if it's like moving the goalposts. You know what I mean? Yeah. But we don't know because again, all of these major corporations, social media. They're all shifting the power structures. Yeah. And the, the the thing, I say this about podcasting all the time, right? Podcasting is, or was at least, it may not be that anymore, but it was in the gold rush era where mm -hmm. everybody's just trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. I think the music industry is also shifting to everybody is just trying to figure out what is going to work. How do we get paid? How do we... <sighs> gain control over this because there's so many different outlets. TikTok really fucked the game up. Mm -hmm. Everybody's been trying to catch up and keep up with TikTok ever since this shit has blown up over the last few years. So now that they have somewhat caught up, it's like, all right, how do we, the labels, make this work for us? And now a Drake, and I hate to break this news to anybody who's an artist, but Drake is more so on the side of the labels than he is the independent artist. They make so much from him. Because it's a mutually beneficial yeah, relationship. Yeah. But and because he has so much power, then they can finally work together instead absolutely. of like 
how record labels usually take advantage of artists, but he's like, no, let's work together and make me the biggest artist in the world. Especially with how labels have been downsizing as of late. They're putting priorities mm. on certain acts. True. Exactly. And it's not going to go to everybody. Especially when you got people like uh, Kevin Lyle stepping down. Yeah. 300. Legends. Yeah, ten years. But we, we there's there's different reasons why he may have stepped down. Mm -hmm. Could be a plethora of reasons. A plethora. And I don't know. What you had to guess? If you had to guess, mm -hmm. if I had to guess, yeah. I, I don't know if I should be funny or for real. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying, like, there's a reason a lot of these, quote, and he's one of those names. He's one of those gatekeepers. And today think, out of all days. And today out of all days. I just slippery. I think the entire landscape is changing, like how Kendrick was alluding to it, that song. Yeah. You know, yeah, and for sure. The people inside the industry oh. know as well. Before we get into um, um, this whole Diddy situation, because I think. The Diddy situation kind of was a domino effect for somebody like a Kevin Lyles to step down from 300. Yeah. Um, Lil Wayne, he dropped a response video saying oh, how yeah. he was heartbroken and disappointed that he didn't get the Super Bowl halftime show. We don't have I to stay seen, here long. I never seen Wayne like that. We don't got to stay here long because I know it's last week's news, but we haven't spoken about it. Yeah. Lil Wayne is our error. We grew up on Lil Wayne on this podcast. For sure. So real quick, how do y'all feel about seeing Wayne in that position? If Hov and Cole can talk about the Grammys every single year, Little Wayne can express how he feels about not performing at the Super Bowl. Okay. Now, to your point, though, I ain't going to lie, man. Seeing one of my goats down and out like that, damn, nigga, I almost did some push-ups for him. <laughs> like, yo, it's that humbling. was tough to watch. It's humbling. Absolutely. It was, yeah. I, and, you know, we never hear from Wayne. Yeah. So when we do hear from him in a response video, I'm like, damn, you really do love football, don't it, you? It really, yeah. it must have really genuinely broke his heart for Real him talk. to say that, how much it hurt him. Now, on the other side of that, it could mess up some business, some potential future business. Mm -hmm. So I understand where people are coming from from that. But I, Little Wayne is a human being. I don't think uh, there's a perfect way to do anything. Yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I think we're missing a lot of empaths these days. And Maybe hey, I just brought it up. He's a really big football fan. He's a Packers. He, he is. I think he's still a Packers he still fan. Is, yeah, yeah, he still yeah. is, right? Big I know he fan. goes hard for sports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like for when sure the whole says. Drake beef with Kendrick Lamar was going down, he didn't support Drake, but he was supporting mad athletes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you Skip know? Bayless. You remember? He was with Skip Bayless every Friday. My yeah, dog yeah. was with Skip. For sure. Yeah. The, so. the, the part for me when uh, I was listening to what he was saying was he, he was like, y'all really just let myself believe that I was going to be the one now was next Jeez. and it, it's like a lot of times like it's like you ever been in a situation where like yo like i really felt like i built myself up myself up mentally to believe that i'm gonna get this <laughs> yeah, don't do and that hit on the balloon just like deflated and it's like all right let me come back down to earth <laughs> to me that was like a really humbling like listen so it's like yeah it's about like, yeah. your yeah. expectations For sure. absolutely oh but like i mean just a little bit to the beginning of the episode i don't know the balance of it though because mm -hmm. it's like sometimes you really let's say i was Lil Wayne. If I'm a really big believer in manifestation and living out my dreams, like that's how you have to be though. Right. And that's yeah. how I achieve my dreams and like everything that I've wanted has come true because I'm like, oh, I'm gonna get this. I genuinely believe I'm gonna do the Super Bowl. Like I could yeah. see myself on stage, boom, I journal about it. That's how I manifest. So all Wayne was doing was really truly being confident in himself. Mm -hmm. So I don't blame him for the expectations, but then Again, more pessimistic people or quote unquote realistic people might be like, no, you're just setting yourself up for disappointment, honestly. Yeah. So I don't know. It's like there's two sides to the he coin. He you know? shouldn't be entitled. He definitely shouldn't be entitled. But let's let's be honest. Think about how many things Wayne has probably been denied of in the last over the last two decades. It probably hasn't been that much. Mm -hmm. So maybe he genuinely didn't know how to react mm -hmm. to it. Real talk. Like, damn. That's a good I, point. Yeah, he's really gotten everything he yeah, wants. Any appearance, <laughs> any appearance he wants, like Essence Fest or whatever. It's like, yep, gets, of course. It's yeah. Wayne. He's like, yeah. and he's already expecting it. So again, not correct, but hey, he's I'm, human. I'm going to play a little bit of yeah. the clip uh, of Wayne. First of all, I want to say forgive me for, uh, forgive me for the delay. Wayne, pick your voice up, Wayne. Um, pick your head the up. Delay on, pick your head up, Wayne. Just the delay, I want to say, uh, I had to first of all, I had to get strength. I had to get This sounds really bad. It's like you had to get strength. That's um, Wayne. I must say thank you. I must say thank you to every voice, every opinion, all the care, all the love, and the support. I'm about to say gospel. Your your <laughs> words turn into to arms and, and held me up when when I try to fall back. Um, you can hear the 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 tone in his voice. He sound he sounds defeated. Like defeat. That's he, the exact word. He sounds defeated. He sounds somebody who, you know, he it sounds like 
he's ready to get it off his chest. Let me, I'm gonna go to another portion in this clip. So, like I said, it broke me. And I'm just trying no. to put me back together. You but put together. My God, have you all helped me. Thanks to all my yeah. peers, my friends, my family. My homies on sports television, everybody repping That's me. That's that I nervous really laugh. I know that. that one. I really do. I feel like I let all of y'all down by not getting that opportunity. Nah, honestly, that's healthy though. It's health. Sometimes you gotta get you gotta get debted. Like sometimes you, <laughs> oh, you know gotta get debted. Nah, you, sometimes you gotta you gotta feel that. You know yes. what I mean? Because like, again, like he's, so, probably, he's been winning so, for so long, bro. It's so unhealthy. Oh my god, I could talk about this for days. It's so unhealthy. <laughs> To get everything that you want in life, bro, it's okay to get that in. Like, you know That's what I mean? Like, it That's is okay. Real. And then I think the way that he was like, you know what? I'm disappointed. I'm hurt. It's okay to also express that as well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know, for everything sure. is, yeah, you know. What I don't like is how judgy people sounded around Wayne in this topic. It was kind of creeping me out a little bit. It was a little disgusting. I ain't going to lie to you. It, I felt like people were treating Wayne like the little bum ass crackhead in the corner that we never respected or something like that. Like, yeah, was, like he's a legend. The discourse around Wayne over this was disgusting. Yeah. I get I get it. We've never seen Wayne in this light with that type of response video, et cetera. I get it. But the way they was talking about him, I'm who, like, because then, yeah. then it goes back to my Jay-Z point where it's like, okay, cool. So are we being selective with when people can outrage about when they feel like they're being mistreated or they're not getting something that they felt entitled to receive? Yeah, and I bet you- Did, we call, did we call Beyonce and Jay-Z entitled when- he went up there what, I did. last year? I did. You did. I did. You did, but I said, Save oh, sound very entitled when you did that. You did, but you were one of not that many. Like, and it, the, the, you, you, it was just you. And, it's, and it, it wasn't just me. It was, bro. Just it was mad people that said that. But <laughs> I think, like Pierre said, it's, it's okay to call, like, hold people accountable for when you need, they need a mirror. I think it was entitled for him to feel that. And I'm not, again, we said this on the last episode, so I don't want to beat a dead horse. But it's not that he's not deserving. Yeah. But just because you're from a city and you you mean something and you want something, it doesn't mean that you get that. And I also feel bad for Wayne because I know a lot of people don't associate rappers with the the tag of a child star, right? Like right. we see the Bow Wows mm. and obviously the Romeo, Romeos, little Romeos. Diggy he was Simmons. There. Diggy. We don't, Diggy. We, we don't see Diggy Throwback. Simmons. <laughs> now we've seen we the nigga. Him, no, yeah, he yeah. on Grownish. <laughs> We've never seen Diggy Simmons. I I used come on. I you used don't see Diggy. I've been backstage at a Diggy concert. Who was his big brother? Why were you backstage at a Diggy well, Simmons? Shout out to my man Jamal. What was his brother's name? The Rossi. older one. Huh? Huh? Jojo. Nah. Jojo. Jojo. Yeah. yeah. Shout we to seen Jojo. Jojo. Yeah. Nah, but we, I ain't seen Diggy. I seen Diggy. He had him out sour. <laughs> he had him outside when I was at that concert. <laughs> the thing with like rappers who started really, really young and continue to have a career, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like Wayne has been the one child rapper to really transition and maintain a career as a rapper, right? Like the Bow Wows, obviously we know Bow Wow since he was six, seven years old, yeah. and now he's an adult, but People don't take Bow Wow seriously as a rapper. We take <laughs> oh, we don't. Bow Wow, you just don't know. No, move so much. We acknowledge <laughs> for what he did. Like Bow Wow's Bow Wow, he's he a fucking legend. I'm not taking that away from him. But, but never, as a rapper, when Bow Wow yeah. drops or when Bow Wow's <laughs> featured on something, you know what? It's, it's you not just like I run to it. You want to know why? You don't. You want to know why? Because it says Shad Moss now. Yeah, yeah. That's he lost us. He should have never changed it. You should have been Bow Wow forever. Nah, you know Shad Moss sounds too grown. He grew up. That's too the, the child, nigga. the child stars grow up. I but know. sometimes nah, you still bow up. You so talented, you you shed some skin. Yeah. He shed the rapper. Like not yep. saying he's obviously he still can rap, but like we don't look at Bow Wow as a rap. He's an entertainer. Yeah. He's somebody who we look to to For entertain sure. us and whatever it is that he does. He has the ability to rap. He started, he got introduced to us as a rapper, but I'm not looking at Bow Wow on the same scale that I'm looking at a Lil Wayne. Nah, I'm just not. I'm yeah, sorry. It's different. It's different. Yeah. It's just different. Yeah, yeah, for right? sure, for sure. But when it comes to like being a child rapper, like Lil Wayne was a rapper at 14 years old. Mm -hmm. It's different. Right. That, with is, the that is a child rapper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wait, and Bow Wow was younger though. No, no, for sure. No, he's, for sure. Saying, he's saying like now Bow Wow is not known as a rapper, but Lil Wayne has been able to gotcha. make that transition. Okay. Exactly. Because okay. 14 is still a child. Yeah, for sure. You get what I'm saying? So the way that we have, or, or Wayne has been able to sustain that consistency, and then even the marketing around a Bow Wow compared to a Lil Wayne, and mm -hmm. and just the, the 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 passion that Wayne clearly has for rapping, like he doesn't, he probably doesn't need to rap, 
as much as he does. You get what I'm saying? Like he he truly loves rap. He's competitive. Yeah. He says it every time he gets a microphone in front of him, how much he's a fan of sports, the mm -hmm. Packers and mm -hmm. Kobe when he when Kobe was alive, God yeah. bless his soul. Like we know that Wayne is competitive and he's a rapper. He's a rapper's rapper, mm -hmm. right? The fact that he has been able to navigate this industry for as long as he has, I think is a testament to him, but is also a case of, uh, there, there, there's a point for me, at least personally, where I have a soft spot for Wayne, mm -hmm. because I think the industry probably didn't do him any favors in the sense that he's probably taken advantage of. We we saw all of the issues that he had with Birdman, who he referred Shout to as his father. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? like. There's a lot of things, and Wayne doesn't seem like the the gossipy, chatty patty type. He's never been that, which is no. why yeah. when he puts out a video yeah. like this, we're all yeah. kind of confused yeah. because Wayne has been shot at allegedly by somebody who he looked at as a, his father was behind some of those. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that yeah. bullshit. And I do want to put some of that blame on Wayne's management. They should have been able to kind of manage expectations with Wayne mm -hmm. even before that response video was put out. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he was pushed to put that out, et cetera, but. Mm -hmm. A team will kind of let you know in those stages of even if you were trying to get a Super Bowl, hey, it's looking good for us. Hey, this is what we need to do. This is what we don't need to do. Mm -hmm. And I don't think he really had that. But when you start out as a 14-year-old child, this is all you know. Yeah. Which is why I said I empathize with Wayne because I think, and we, we've we heard him talk on social issues and say, I don't give a fuck about that. I just care about who's licking my balls. Right? <laughs> like, that's his message. Yeah. I don't give a fuck about y'all niggas. I just want to yeah. eat some pussy. Yeah. If you ask Wayne in an interview, What's your favorite meal? Pussy. Pussy. He said it. Like, Pussy. that's just who he, he's an artist through and through because that's what he's been developed as. That's what he's been groomed to be. So I don't look to him to give me insight on social justice and all of these other things. Right. But I empathize with him because I don't think he even understands what the real world is because he's never really been exposed to point. like the real world. He's only known and what it is to be an artist in that type of light since he was 14. Yeah. And he lives in his own world that has been documented yes when he, he meets famous rappers famous actors he don't even know who they are <laughs> he's had the so luxury is, and the privilege of yeah, doing that for sure and so i think a lot of us kind of forget that because again he wasn't tagged as a little bow wow or a little romeo right he was Lil wayne and Lil wayne was marketed to us as in a rapper's ra a rapper he was a part of the hot boys with grown-ass men doing grown-ass things talking yeah. about grown-ass shit at that time, and we just accepted him for him. And Birdman, being the genius that he is, he never looked or marketed him as a little Bow Wow counterpart, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like Pierre, if you don't mind looking, look up the age of a Bow Wow and Lil Wayne. You, know, you mean like when they started? No, I just their oh, current, just age current ages, today, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Like I want to see the discrepancy in age. Wow, I think they might still be in. A, they may be in the quote, same vein. Yeah, yeah, is sure. what I'm trying to Bow say. Bow Wow is 37. Wayne is 40. And Little Wayne is 41. 41. About four, four years, years apart. They're four years apart. A high we school don't, career. We don't associate yeah, yeah, yeah. them yeah. to be that much different, but they yeah. were both child stars. And I think yeah. Wayne just didn't have the privilege of being a child in that way. Mm -hmm. He was never marketed as that. He was never presented as that. He's always just been his own entity. Yeah. So when he is tapped from reality, I have to look at it with a grain of salt, like, oh, this is just what he's been groomed to be. He doesn't know any better, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, you're right. And a mm -hmm. lot of people say, like, you know, Jay-Z made a business decision in choosing sure. Kendrick Lamar, right? And you're right. I think they have two different types of business savvy minds. We just saw Jay-Z open up a sports book with Michael Rubin for fanatics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like there's a whole nother level of business being done that he might not be even privy to just mm -hmm. assuming and being entitled to what he thought he was going to get. And too, I know, um, you know, when you, when big shows are put on like that, like a Super Bowl, the decisions that go into that, um, you, you hear a lot of backstage chatter of like, Hey, like, what's this person like to work with? Or, Hey, wh what was your experience with this person? Um, from what I've heard just online, I've heard that like Wayne wasn't the easiest to work with. Um, they have people come out that actually said that. Um, and then like you also hear about Kendrick, people saying they they love hearing Kendrick, uh not hearing, they love being around Kendrick. Kendrick is a true consummate professional when he's on tour and stuff like that. So, you know, if I'm somebody making a decision between all right, I could either go left or right, you kind of have to go with whatever makes the most sense. For sure, for sure. And it just sucks to see Wayne in that light. But again, just just a different perspective. When you think about Lil Wayne, think a little bad. No. 
Don't think nah. of Lil Wayne when you think of Lil <laughs> nah, Wayne. Nah, just think about the, nah. the, how different nah. they are, but they're really the, they're peers. <laughs> think about Tunchi. I don't think we look at them as peers. Look at them like Wheezy. But we don't look at him like Wheezy unless he would be at halftime. Well, Hove don't look at him like Wheezy. Nah, he do. That's exactly, <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> what he like did. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, oh, so, so that's that's that on that. Yeah. Um, anything y'all want to talk about before we get a little, little, little different? <laughs> Just a little different. Just a little, a little nasty. We got to get to it. Do we got to get to it? Yes. Yeah. Should I put it like a PSA out? <laughs> Disclaimer. So on September 16th, where were you? In New York City. When a thousand bottles evening. of lube <laughs> was confiscated. 100,000. And, and baby oil. Pounds of baby oil. You know what's so crazy? It take me like three years to get past one bottle. No, exactly. <laughs> facts. <laughs> the fuck? That's a fact, yeah. And I'm a moisturized girl. Hey, you could go to Babies R Us right now. They don't even got 200 in stock. Facts. This motherfucker had a thousand. Like the magnitude mm. that you would have to be executing these mm. freak offs. Freak offs. <laughs> yeah. Honestly. Oh my God, I'm jumping back, jumping back and forth. But seeing f- the word literally freak offs in court <sighs> documents yeah. so many times was like so crazy to me. It's like a legal term yeah, to them yeah. in this case. And the freak people offs, saying like, it too. The newscasters saying freak yeah. offs, it sounds mad funny. Because I mean, us talking about it, like, like people, you know, in the culture, like, you know, potting or tweeting or whatever, we just say, oh my God, freak offs, did he? But it's in the court <laughs> documents. Like that's what they are professionally they known say. as. Literally. Folks, there's still Dude, time wrong. to join Alex in. <laughs> His yeah. celibacy against freakiness. Okay? No more freak bull Alex. There like, is no y'all more. don't need to be freaks anymore. Yes, you do. <laughs> no, you do. It's just levels. You don't gotta nah. prove to be the freakiest, because that's what a freak off really is. <laughs> yo, they think said, about it. Yo, they said it's the oh, off that oh, really like, like you can be a freak. Yo. But now we got to have a different competition. competitions. Like, can't, nigga, can't we, compete, like... we freaking off. <laughs> Yo, they said they had to IV him. Yo, bro. To bring him back to life. Yo, We're talking after about Diddy, by the way, guys. Sex. Yo, bro, you know how much I, you, uh-huh. you know how much sex you have to have and drugs you have to have hey. to, like, Reggie, to rehydrate you yourself? Reggie, like... close your ears. After two, three nuts, <laughs> I'm good. In a row or like it throughout the day? In a row. In a row, okay. In like so, a session. So to find out that these free calls were occurring for days. <laughs> okay. Weeks. <laughs> weeks even sometimes. So much so that they had to get hospital IV drip to bring them back to life to restore the cell regeneration. <laughs> this was literally in, in the... In the court documents. This is literally... In the indictment. In the yeah. indictment. So he was it. arrested this past week. Uh, I was trying to set it up like in chronological <laughs> order, but nah. you guys just went straight to nah, the baby nah, oil. Nah, nah, my fault. My fault. Like, We're going to come back. I'm the sorry. freak off is crazy, but Diddy was arrested this past week. We we had a feeling that this was coming. Again, uh, we're recording on the <sighs> Tuesday. By the time this has dropped, we probably have got so many different details, updates. so many different updates, so forgive us for that. But niggas is freaky, so freaky that we can't even keep up. We can't even keep up. Diddy was arrested mm-hmm. in New York at a hotel. I do want to kind of, I know there's a lot of jokes to be made, oh, yeah. but I do want to kind of like <laughs> yeah. get away from the whole like, yo, he was just so freaky that they arrested him. Because that's what I've seen people saying that. And I feel like that is sick because it's like, uh-huh. no, actually, he's a rapist. He's being charged yeah. with sex trafficking. He's transported yeah. prostitution. So like, it is very serious allegations. Like we could talk, about, we could joke. I'm not saying we have to kill the mood, but I'm saying like these no, are very right. serious charges. Yeah, and the sure. men that, not men, like the people who are like on social media right now, like yo, like all he was doing was having sex parties. Like I hate that's that. that's not it, guys. No, but, it wasn't. And, and, yeah, and just that. to kind of piggyback off mm-hmm. of the things that you said, because we we gonna get these jokes off. But <laughs> before we get the jokes <laughs> off, uh, Diddy's indictment was uh, it was a recall, racketeering in in total, and some of the charges or the charges were sex trafficking. Uh, forced labor, kidnapping, arson, bribery, and obstruction of justice. Real quick, now, mm-hmm. real quick. Mm-hmm. When I heard Rico, I was kind of like, "Why do they, you know, place it as that?" Um, it's Rico is usually with more than one person as a co-conspirator, and, and more than one crime, and more than one, one crime. type of crime. Yeah. So that's alluding to the fact that, like, I think a lot more names are going to come falling down the pike oh, as for sure. everything happens. They Absolutely. already tried to get. They already tried to get a lot of people. Yeah. And like certain other cases and and Mm -hmm. a lot of people, this is going to be untangled. The documentary is going to be 
insane. Yeah. The the facts that are going to be revealed are insane. What I will say is I don't wish death on anybody, but we've seen people like um, Epstein. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. What mm -hmm. was that nigga first name? He's so nasty. Jeff. I can't even remember. Jeff. 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 A nigga Epstein. named Jess. <laughs> Jeff Epstein. Yeah. Uh, we've seen situations like that where he's connected to a lot of powerful people and then he ends up dead. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, something like a Diddy who's been around for decades, his reign of power, his run has been massive, long. The reach is there. We seen him with Trump before Trump was Trump. Right, like, yeah. and Trump always been Trump, but before he was president, and then all of the political connections, the entertainment connections, like when you are known for being that guy, the it guy of a certain lifestyle and a certain party, and you you attract a web of networking yeah. network, yeah. like is gonna be a, a lot to be revealed. And so, Absolutely. what I will say is. Uh, prayers to any of the victims For because sure. in this indictment, yep. uh, we see victim one and victim two. We we don't have the names as of yet on who these uh, who these titles are assigned to. Mm -hmm. But again, we know there are people that are victims in this. So within these, we we again, I'm gonna get these jokes off. I don't know about Alex and Reggie. Yeah, I'm we gonna talk it. about the baby oil because how much to, baby oil do you hold hold really need? How much lube do hold you need? Like how many buttholes was you in, nigga? Damn. Hold on, hold what on. What the fuck? Wait, wait, wait. God damn, like. Wait, wait. Now. Freak it. All right. Just hold on. I caught the press conference today <laughs> that was um, cited by the district attorney. Yep. And I wrote down some notes and I did want to highlight these things, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the prosecution is alleging that his empire, he used his empire to abuse and exploit women. Mm -hmm. uh, like Combs Enterprises. Yeah. All of his companies. Sean Absolutely. Sean, everything. He used. Okay. Yeah, they listed all of his companies. Yeah. Like, and yeah. all of his monikers. Like, they're really being so thorough. Love, yeah. P, Diddy, Absolutely. Diddy. And Puffy, he yeah. used Puffy. employees and close associates to carry out yep. some of these acts and to help him. He wasn't alone. Of course, like Pierre mentioned, this is a Rico. So there's going to be multiple people involved in this. Um, one count of racketeering. You write this down, right? Mm -hmm. One count of racketeering, all of those things. Um, back in July, see, I was, I, ha oh, I can't even tell you the bet I made. I'm gonna tell y'all off camera. You told us, you in told the chat. us the I, I, but I can't. You don't want to say it. I can't. Nah, nah, nah. nah. It's a serious topic. Nah. Just know I want money, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's a, it's a serious topic. I don't want to say that. But back in July, I read an article that they had selected a grand jury mm -hmm. for Diddy in this case. When I heard that, I went, oh, this is very serious. Mm. You only select the grand jury for, you know, felonious types of events and activity. And long story short, the district's attorneys, uh, not the district, the prosecution, they have to present evidence to this grand jury. And this grand jury can either give you probable cause, mm -hmm. which would then give you the leniency and the ability to then go to try and indict someone, mm -hmm. or they won't. So all this is the inevitable for me. Yeah. I think there were folks a little bit surprised because they had seen him in New York for the past two weeks, right? Mm -hmm. Even that was strange, though. But he did that. Be oh, sorry, you go first. No, no, go. He yeah. did that because his lawyer confirmed he did that because did he travel back to New York to turn himself in and cooperate? And that's why he was spending his last days in freaking Central Park and all that. But <laughs> something happened, which is what Alex is saying. Something happened earlier, and then yeah. he got arrested earlier than expected. That's yeah. what happened. That's a, why a he day, was parading around New York. A Absolutely. day before. Yeah, yeah. So, should he have fled the country? <laughs> that is something anybody keeps saying, yo. That is. No, I'm serious. Wait, but if he, um, if he fled the country... Does he really great, get away with it? Like, I, I'm not too not, familiar with... I know there's jurisdiction. I don't and, think on a case like ex extradition this. Extradition laws. Yeah, so it, it, it but there's on. extradition. I get it. There's extradition laws in Bali, Mar uh, it, Morocco. It on, yeah, yeah. I get it. But I think this type of case, they would have found a way to extradite him. But to answer your question, Savon, I think Diddy's the type of person where he don't want to live like Russell Simmons in Bali, where he has to complete... Unlimited free calls? See, you could look at it like that, but right? He would, but so another, he would rather... Being cooperate Jeff. with the I, I i think he has enough ego and confidence in himself because oh. we've seen that he also the district attorney also revealed that he's reached out to uh witnesses of this case yeah you after, know after the raid after the raid so kind i think of this coaching is, them through. absolutely i think yeah. this is a guy with an amount of ego who feels like you know what i'm diddy i don't want people to continue to look at me as a villain and I've gotten away with it for so long. I've gotten away yeah. with it for so long. Let me take my chances with these very expensive lawyers mm. and see what can happen. Because if my name does get cleared, 
then I'm back on top. I could go back to uh, using my name to market yeah. and to be a draw. Yo, you know speak, what I mean? But after of, everything, like your houses were raided and you knew that there were there was evidence. One of the things in the court documents was like there's evidence of the freak offs because he recorded all of them. That's yeah. a freaky mob. Literally. So but he knows that those were seized, so, but you're still yeah. wanting to cooperate and maybe clear your name. Allegedly, and that's what I don't I know. I think he and, has that amount of ego. And they were saying when they apprehended him, um, the time that they did, they also found drugs in there uh, called Tusi, a drug called Tusi. I think it's a uh, in New York in in New York when they apprehended him in New York. It's uh, Tusi is um, X mixed with cocaine. Mm -hmm. It's got like a pink substance from he what they're saying. He had it on him, like literally in his room when the feds came. Yeah, well, they went back to the room and they looked through it, and all that stuff was in there. The other thing too, he couldn't stop freaking off. That Alex was was mentioning about the grand jury. They subpoenaed uh, three hundred. I think there were three. It was a three hundred. Uh, subpoenas that were sent out a lot of witnesses and a for lot people of to corroborate Damn. kind of what they've already saw uh, and all the things that they confiscated and then like 50 people mm -hmm. were also um, you know um, as witnesses so there's a lot of evidence that kind of kind of seems like really damning I'm, I'm going to keep this in fact right because everybody has opinions everybody has allegations and assumptions and what we deem to be true versus what can't or isn't true I'm going to keep this specific point based in fact. The fact is, Diddy, is there was a video of you beating a woman in a hotel lobby. Yep. That is a fact, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We all saw, we it. saw it. It wasn't AI. No. It wasn't word of mouth. No. It wasn't in paperwork. And, and it sounds read. like Cassie's cooperating with these guys. It sounds like she's cooperating. Yeah. But going back to what Reggie said is his ego. The fact is, just on that video alone, you've lost. You have nothing to gain other than maybe to your family and your children who want to believe that you're the person that you try to present yourself to be. Yeah. I remember his son, um, one of his children, they came out with a song directly after all of this shit, after the raids and everything. And he was defending his father, as most children would defend their father if they probably, got a good relationship. He's probably a great father to his kids, He may honestly, be, like, right? Like, he, he could be. And even if he isn't a great father, the optics is, this is my dad, mm -hmm. yeah. right? I'm going to so ride for my I'm dad. I'm going to defend my dad, yeah. right? So with all of, and, and again, the, the, the song that King Combs put out, the video that we saw with Puffy in that lobby, right? Like these are fact-based things that we're saying. We're not talking about the things that coulda, woulda, shoulda. Yep. This is what <clears throat> happened. So for you to, 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 to still be out and about, because over the last few weeks, I don't know if y'all seen it on your algorithm, but you've seen him it's get stopped outside. by fans. He's yeah. been outside. Yeah. Been outside. Yeah. Been outside. So, like, Hasn't really been saying much, but he'll let people record and he'll just stand there. Yeah. He, was, he was in Harlem too. Yeah. He moved to New York two yeah. weeks ago from this and, recording. And whenever I saw him in Harlem, because I'm going to be honest, like I always knew that he was from Harlem and he was from uptown Mount and Vernon. everything, Mount Vernon, in that area, Vernon. right? Mm -hmm. I don't remember. And again, I may not have the greatest memory and I may not even be tapped in in that way. I haven't seen him in Harlem. <laughs> no, no, no. You might have seen him at a club in Harlem, but you ain't seen him in Harlem. D we like haven't outside. seen like, like you ain't seen him in polo grounds. You ain't seen him in certain trenches. I know what you mean. Yeah, and you that's, know what I'm saying. And that's kind of what it looked like <laughs> when you see the clips of G Dep and just clips of him and niggas from the hub. We like, hold on, bro. Like, yeah. you know, when you go back home, you did that shit. Yeah, <laughs> and that's it's, it's, it's like when you get caught cheating yeah. or when you fucked up, yeah. you go back to the one you know that's gonna ride for you. Yeah, it, it's the same thing. It's like, oh, let me go back home and let me try to whatever mm -hmm. the case may be. Um, but to to that point, I never heard of this amount of of bail. They said fifty million dollars was the bond or the bail. Now you know y'all know how bond works, right? Mm -hmm. Talk to me. You only have nah, to talk to me. Oh, where the, the, the hood expert. <laughs> the hood expert. <laughs> nah, don't do that. But you know, he wouldn't have paid fifty million. He, it's, with Bond, you pay about ten percent. Mm -hmm. So he probably would have paid like ten mil cash. So, but the number fifty mil is mm -hmm. absolutely insane. And ten mil is still a lot of money for bail. Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought they yeah. didn't even grant him bail. Right, they didn't. They they didn't. He, this is what him and his lawyer were seeking. Oh, yeah. It, it was on, it yeah. was on the detention letter to the judge. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. And the feds, they didn't. They 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 were against it. 
for yeah, a plethora of reasons. Yeah. Some of those reasons included because they feel like um, he risk. was a flight risk. Witness yeah. intimidation. Um, he actually um, submitted his passport to prove that he wasn't a quote unquote flight risk. But all of the things that we've heard about Diddy being a bully and mm -hmm. harassing people mm -hmm. and tampering with witnesses. And mm -hmm. intimidating with oh, yeah, yeah. Even as of recent. As yeah. a recent. To know that they raided your house and still tamper with witnesses nah, and try to fun. intimidate, that's ego. No. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> uh, and, and Mind you, his phone is tapped. It sounds like <laughs> prison may be the best place for him. Nah, sometimes you guys Meaning, say, oh. he like baby oil and yeah. men. Yeah. Yeah. And he yeah. like power structure. Yeah. Yeah. When you go to prison, <laughs> niggas got to let them know who's who. <laughs> nah, for real. Yeah, if okay. you willing to let niggas know who's who with the... It might seem like that might be the place he kind of needs to be in this phase in his life. Like, think about all the niggas he's been going at. Like, his beef has been with Kid Cudi. Like, Kid Cudi's not the most intimidating guy. Crazy. I don't look at Kid Cudi and be like, oh, shit. Yeah. I got to mm -hmm. conquer you, right? <laughs> like, if you go to prison, you might... He might want to drop the soap sometimes. Yeah. And it's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yo, shut up. <laughs> yeah. Shut up. I do wonder what, if he is locked away in prison, I wonder what his experience will be. Like, how is that going to play out? It, I don't know. I just, There's it, a lot of people who feel very vindicated on today, too. There, there's a lot of people. Oh, yeah. Um, Danny who, DeCain. There are a lot Aubrey of Day. The, it's all like, yeah. there's so many Jaguar people, so right. many different stories yeah. Gene, that have been put Gene out. Dude. Gene, all of these people. And that's the other thing about it, bro. Like, yeah. how, what is your ego? Like, God, I'm, I'm going to pray. I'm going to put this on record. God, please don't ever allow my ego please. to blind me yeah. from not living in reality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's like, a prayer. Please. Because yeah. for him to still move and, and, and smile and come with all of these things, knowing what it is. And, and at this point, it's what you have been accused of doing, yeah. but you know what you've done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and just, you know, using your power to manipulate people in situations, right? I, I sort of feel a bit bad for the employees of his companies that were asked to, to change the bed sheets, that were asked to bring the lube. What was on them sheets? You know what was on them sheets. I don't. I've never been in a freak off. And stay out of it. <laughs> Use your imagination. Use your I can't even but imagine what it point. takes to fuck. That's my point. So hard. So now imagine I need an IV. That's what I'm saying. I, that's that's actually so scary. Do you know scary. what it means? So like, now imagine that's someone's job, right? To like, fuck. Imagine. No, no, no. I'm saying like imagine <laughs> if your boss was Diddy, right? Uh -huh. You over here thinking you got a job with a mole. So uh -huh. you know he's just trying to attach to his businesses. And then one of the duties he tells you to do is, oh yeah, baby boy, I need you to go get some ketamine. And then get some motherfucking lube. And, and it's that's like, their job. And that's their job, right? And, and you're putting them in a very weird predicament because now they feel, okay. They're like, no, but I want to work for Diddy. I want to work for Diddy, but even if I want to speak out, who do I run to? And too, like. You've gotten away with so much over the years that yeah. I've seen because I'm an employee of yours. For sure. You've completely implicated me. And like seeing somebody with that level of success, you kind of almost want to listen to everything that they're telling you to do. Like, yo. You want me to walk to Brooklyn for some cheesecake? You want me to go to Junior? All right, we out, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Matter of fact, when we come back, I don't even want you here. And that's what wind up, what wind up happening. So. Absolutely. And it's like so scary. Imagine. I mean, obviously, we knew Diddy was one of the most powerful people in the entertainment industry. Like, we know that. But it's like so scary thinking about how powerful he really was. Because as Alex was saying, like, the amount of people that were involved in what he was doing for like two decades, like these freak offs were like big parties. That's why he needed a thousand. <laughs> that's why. Why do you laugh? At that's it? true. It's true. Keep going. Saying it's Keep so going. like matter of factly. <laughs> it's true. Like, Keep going. The fact that you need a thousand bottles of baby oil means these are huge parties. So it's like imagine how many people are in there. And you've been doing this for two decades and all your employees know, but they still kept quiet. Like, how Facts, powerful yeah. can you be? Like, that is so scary this to me. Like, nigga is 55 years old. Your dick is not even supposed to be working that good. <laughs> you heard what I think, no, no, it's not just him. He was obviously participating. He's a freak-off no, no. master. But he's, what he's, what watching, he's watching people. He's ordering people to do it with each other, which yeah. is even more sick. It's like, not just him. Like, like, for the people confused about what, uh, sex trafficking. What's a freak-off? A freak? Well, by Diddy standards, <laughs> I'll tell you. I do have the legal, I, legal definition now. No, get the legal definition. I'll give you the I Diddy do. definition first. All right, here go the Diddy definition. <laughs> yeah. We're going to the hotel room. Okay. Okay. We need drugs. We need NDAs, okay. and we're gonna fuck. No, no, no. <laughs> Y'all gonna fuck, and I'm gonna stay in the corner. I might masturbate a little bit, but best believe I'm gonna record it. 
just to make sure I got some dirt on you. So if in the future you want to come at me or you don't want to do what I say, I have this piece of evidence. Yeah. I have the literally the legal definition. Just want to throw it in there. Yeah. The freak offs were because I had to literally read the whole document and write an article about it today. The freak offs were allegedly, quote, elaborate and produced sex performances that Combs arranged, directed, masturbated during and often electronically recorded. So that he can coerce his victims. Look, he took executive producing too serious. <laughs> he was just supposed to leave it at music. Yeah, they said he was a he hit was maker. He EP in, uh, <laughs> They said he was a hit maker. EP in something as nasty as that. And then, like, on a serious tip, just the trauma you put people through just for, so you could get your shit off. That's sick. Like, it's so mentally sick. Like, I just... <laughs> Wait, let me ask a question. This just nigga a, was a yeah, freak. I'm the just, freak. Just, I feel you, Alex. I don't want to be a freak no well, more. Just to throw me. it in there. Join me. Just to throw it yes. in there. Yes, I'm listening. If the people in that scenario, Alex, that you just mentioned, yeah. if everyone consented to that, right, is it wrong? Pierre, I'm so glad you asked that. If I'm a multi-billionaire who I've asserted, and I've asserted dominance over a plethora of people over the years, most of the people around me know that and can see that. What what is a yes or no, Pierre? Also, it's it's like documented. I'm sure they have evidence of this, mm -hmm. especially after the raise. But the consent, you're not able to give consent if you're under copious amounts of sex, drugs, and alcohol. And he deliberately created that environment to take advantage of those people. Absolutely. Then your consent is not really consent. So that happened like a majority of the time. Ketamine, I get what you're saying. It's like ket if, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ketamine, ecstasy, GHB. But we heard these were the drugs that were being used during these sex these freak -offs. But I we see heard the niggas from the nineties never wanted to leave the nineties. Cause in the nineties this was normalized. Yeah. I'm, I'm not no I'm not saying it was well, right. Sure. Hold on, hold on, but in the nineties let's, let's hold on. I'm not let's, saying hold on, hold on, let's be clear here. Cause I know what you're saying, Savon, yeah, but let's same. be clear because it needs to know podcast. Yeah. There's a lot of people out there who are getting what sex trafficking is confused. If you transport a person over state lines to have sex with a person like a prostitute, that is considered sex trafficking. Sure. Even if you fly, well, I, I if you fly like somebody to, out. I know, but I'm I, saying what you're saying, people are trying to co uh, conflate the two of it. I was speaking to the yeah. drug choice, right? <laughs> That's yeah, what let's I was let him, I was speaking yeah. to like, I'm, I'm saying you hear a lot of these guys go on drink champs and they all romanticize the 90s. Yeah. They all say, oh my God, it's just a great time. And the drugs and the ex ecstasy was a real thing that had real people doing real nasty shit. <laughs> and sometimes people can't escape that ever. They, they, they just don't grow mm -hmm. up. Like we see it all the time yeah. with people we go to high school with. How many people do you go to high or have you been to high school with? And you see them always reminiscing about the good old days, mm. always talking about, oh, my God, when we was in high school, it used to be this because of that. Like yeah. the errors just changed. It's like Molly. Molly was normalized when I was in high school. It was just a thing that some people yeah. did. Yeah. Right. Like, but now today, when you think about it, it's like, wait, hold up, bro. We that wasn't as cool. We have the education on some of these things. Yeah. We know what it is. We know what it does. Like, maybe we should be a little bit more cautious. The fact that he was still using things like ecstasy and ketamine and all of these drugs or whatever it says he was using in 2024 just tells me that he was still of the mindset of a certain era. Like we see Irv Gotti crash out over ecstasy all the time. And I'm glad that you mentioned the year, right? And uh, for those of you that don't know, the indictment is surrounded, well, it basically starts from 2008. Mm -hmm. So all the things Diddy has done in the 90s or before then, it's not included in this indictment. Interesting. Who's to know if they bring more charges down and incorporate more people into this? But it's a very good point you're making. Uh, on a side note, you're right. They saying ketamine is like a booty hole drug. So what that's what, what I'm, isn't it horse tranquilizer? What you mean by what, what is it? What do you mean by that? I don't know. Just do your Google. It don't make you feel. It don't make you feel. So bro. you just numb all over. You got when booty hole drug. What you you want me to tell you what it is, Pierre? Because yeah, you dying in He dying in no Like time. I know you nah, dying in You know it's on Pierre's bucket list. I ain't gonna like. I always, like <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You got. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> you like me and Imagine, I, I, imagine, <laughs> imagine. Okay. All right. I'm, he, I'm pretty sure. You know, say no, Because yeah. I did the research. That's what we're oh, supposed I, to do. I, I, I did the research. Okay. Because I was about to. Because I, I just. I got to talk. I got to understand what it is that oh, we're reporting on. Okay. okay. But from what it is based that I know. Research. Based on research. Based on research. Is when you need to get stretched out. 
Wait, that's what? what ketamine is specifically used for? It's a for? booty hole drug. I'm trying to tell y'all something. That's what they're saying out there. You, you've been constipated before, right, Reg? Um, I mean, not you. I don't, Alex, I don't I'm just, poop. I'm not, I didn't uh, mean to ask uh, you that. I was just like, me, women cool. don't poop. Sometimes, yeah. like, when you're constipated, <laughs> like, all right, have you ever been impressed by your work? And what I mean by that is, you ever take a shit, like look in it, brand? and be like, God damn, that shit, how did that Facts. come out of, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. Honestly, damn, why no, that true. shit so big in the toilet? I know this no, is true. supposed to be silly right now, but honestly, if you have that feeling, that is a great feeling because you're supposed to have, you know, healthy Bow, ways bow, like that. Yeah, so yeah. if you are impressed with your boob, good job, congratulations. Like, that's a good thing. Facts. If your brand is elite, then you good. Like, yeah. sometimes the, the log is bigger than your dick. <laughs> And you're like, damn. No, wait, this is too no, descriptive wait, for my liking. Up, wait, what? No, this shit is how long? You never looked in the toilet and saw that shit? Uh, nah, for real. Well, you should be having logs like that. If you have tiny poops, you have to go to the hospital, how you, guys. How you know when you should touch the water? <laughs> Nigga, bro. You, you compare the water density to how, how far it is with the poop? One time I had a realization. I was really upset because I'm looking at what came out of... I'm like, wait, hold up. Only that much? Uh, <laughs> it was a massive log. But oh, oh, wait, why God. are you upset by the massive log? Because why is why is that even able to come out of me? That like also that? means you No, that's that, a good thing. That's a good thing. You see long. your mic? <laughs> this is too descriptive for my liking. This is inappropriate. Uh, I'm gonna file a comment. Alex, Alex, you see yeah. the, so, the uh, shit was HR low. wants to apologize I'm for like, that. God Reggie. damn, nigga, you need more fiber in your diet. Why the fuck that, you that, shit? Well, that, well, God all poop shit to me, HR's for that sure. That also means your body didn't digest everything that you just ate when it's that big. I'm just saying now, <laughs> ketamine works in reverse. That shit came out of me. Type shit. The ketamine is for something that big to go into Inside you. Inside of you. Booty hole. Oh, drink. I thought where you were bringing us was that the ketamine makes your booty hole so loose That's that all thought. your poop's going to fall out. That's what I thought too. <laughs> nah, Diddy wanted to go in. He didn't want it to go out. Loose. Yeah. Oh, this That's is a, what This is a is disgusting for. episode. Hey. <laughs> and for the men out there that like to fuck next to each other. You see? Yo, I always thought that was weird. You see? Can we talk about that real quick? Yeah, let, let's Yo, do it. And, oh, you mean, okay, wait, wait, two, like, straight men? I don't... Because if they're gay, if they're gay, of course they're gonna... Hey, no, no, no. Let me... So, you know what? Let me finish. If you gay, straight, whatever you identify as, if you like to fuck next to each... Like a gangbang. If you like to fuck Damn, next Reggie. to... Hey. I'm Damn, trying to see... Way. I'm what? trying to see if, what he's trying to say. You talking about like, like a DP? You train, train gangbang, DP, whatever slang term y'all got. If y'all like having sex next to other people, be careful. You do not know how it can implicate you in the future. Oh. Okay. This, okay. I like. I'm sure. I'm I like sure. where you're going with this because yes. I thought you were just kink shaming right no, now. No. 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 But I, this, he's me. No, that's actually very smart. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure there are a plethora of people who always look at these sex acts like, oh, we just having fun, this and that. Mm -hmm. Okay. You might be involved in. you You just might be involved in some bullshit. A freaking Rico. <laughs> Start fucking by yourself. Because I remember when some dude. I, oh, <laughs> okay. Man, I forget this. Who this guy was? He was on the, Vlad. Okay. And he was talking about how <laughs> Diddy knew how big his dick was. He was like, Diddy know my shit big. Wow. Y'all ain't what? see that? You talking about Aaron Hall? Aaron Hall! The R&B singer. The R&B singer. How did you know? He knew! Because I love Aaron Hall's music, but he a nasty motherfucker. He was like, yo, did he know my dick big? My dick really yeah, like that, that for crazy. real, for real. If you ain't never seen my dick, did he know the dick? And I was you like, God it. damn, why you got it? Why he know your dick? You when see? did he say this? Like so, a few years ago? He said it a few oh, years ago. Champs. So now yeah. Aaron Hall. And he said it on Vlad. If you get implicated for bragging <laughs> about your sexual endeavors with other people, whether it be men or women, look what it could fly you into. I'm That's sorry. why I love privacy. Hello? Like, I know I'm Facts. always safe. No one knows shit about me. Like, <laughs> oh, my the, God. They going to loop you in with the ringleader. <laughs> <laughs> but see, sometimes okay. that's the okay. problem when you're trying to show off. Yeah. You're right. These niggas with horse dicks be trying to show off. <laughs> That's the problem. Because these niggas be like, yo, I got to I gotta get in my bag and show everybody what I'm doing. Like, yo, sometimes it's cool to be a grower. It's cool. Also, I feel like if you're really... Because why the fuck you got to show me or anybody that shit? Or, or not even talking? show me, but like... Men who have to like talk about how big their dicks are are like that's so strange to me. Yeah, like, yeah. If why? You, if you need a cheerleader to be intimate with one person, take take it back to square one, man. Because like, <laughs> even in that interview, <laughs> Aaron Hall, me. right? He didn't say no. Actually, I'm lying because he did talk about the woman he was sleeping with. He, he was involved. He was like, oh, she know how big I am, right? But he <laughs> had to even let other men know he know how big I am too. That's uh, crazy. Ego. That's what it was. You know what I'm saying? Like ego. Yeah, you gotta you gotta be careful with certain people. What Beyonce said? 
You got to be ego. That part. Yeah. yeah. That is what a lot of this is fit, kind of centered around. I yeah, hate to it say it, yeah, man. It you know, uh, and uh, listen, I am praying for his family members who are adjacent to this matter mm -hmm. and have to deal with this, like his daughters. I think I'm about his daughters about the daughters a lot. Daughters, yeah. Yeah. I think about the sons. I hope the sons aren't implicated in anything. However, I did. You know, there's some out there. Uh, listen, we'll wait for the rest of the facts. I up. am very curious to see if and when the videos that are allegedly that oh, exist. No. I'm, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm curious to see what, because this can this can get really deep. This can yeah. go really, really, Absolutely. really, think really deep. Think about all of the people that have attended his party since mm -hmm. 2008. And think about all of the people who were. What's the word that I'm looking for? Um, yeah. Exposed. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Think about all of the people who felt exposed to the dynamic of this is Diddy. Like there was a, a interview with a young lady that used to date Diddy. Oh yeah. And she said when she met Diddy, you know, they they had a little vibe or whatever. Pierre, you know the young lady's yeah, name? Yeah, her name is Gina. Gina? Gina. Yeah. yeah. Oh, What's her last name? Gina. Young. Asian young. young lady? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. She <laughs> she <laughs> she was on a Yeah, why he said that? <laughs> Wait, I was like, Yo, like what the like, fuck? It took a moment for me to nah, process. Yeah, I just processed it too. Uh, say, say it again, say one. Nah. What's the last name? Uh, young. Okay. I said it. I hate this. But the <laughs> Gina Young. <laughs> Imagine her name was like Gina Kim or something. He's like way off. <laughs> nah, like, he was just nah. being racist for like no reason. Nah, it's Gina Young. Okay, okay, okay. But even even she said one of the things, um, when she met Diddy, Diddy was like, yo, you made it. And she's like, what do you mean? She was like, yo, you in Diddy's house. You made it. You here. You you with me. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. imagine all of the people who may have been in that space, who felt vulnerable, who felt exposed and felt like, oh, this is a benchmark to success. This is a pathway to success. Yeah. And a lot of people don't have the, the Mace mentality, right? Mace was able to walk away from the peak of his popularity mm. because he was so in tune with who he was and what it is that he felt it was in the moment to. what he was exposed to yeah. and the things that he was comfortable with doing and not doing. Right. So I'm going to walk away. A lot of people tried to call Mace crazy and, and, and maybe, you know, because he went to go find God and he joined the church, a lot of people, you know, question that in the moment. But if you listen to Mace every single week on It Is What It Is, you can tell Mace is still Mace. He's still that nigga from Harlem. Yeah, He's still sure. the essence of hip hop. He is who he is. He didn't completely change yeah. who he is. He just stepped away from a situation mm -hmm. that clearly didn't serve him or, or, or his beliefs, right? So everybody's not mace where they're going to find themselves in a compromising position and is willing to walk away from it all. If in fact, most people are of the opposite. Most people are so thirsty and starved for money, fame, and opportunity mm -hmm. that they fall subject to some of the things that they've been exposed to with this whole Diddy situation. They lose their soul. They lose their soul. They lose their purpose. And now you got to retroactively try to be like, damn, I really wish I didn't do that. Now you got to yeah. go to therapy. Now you got to talk to, you know, your people, you find God, whatever the case, you, whatever your journey is, right? Everybody doesn't have that intuition to say, this is not for me. And so this is how we get a lot of these stories, these victims, because a lot of people want to victim shame and say, oh, you didn't know better. You didn't know this. But most of us and, and, and most of the people, and unfortunately, he tried to talk the black love shit. He preyed on his people yeah. because a lot of these victims, yes, I know there was a white model who, who came out against Diddy. And I'm sure there's a lot of white people who, who have stories of Diddy. But most of the people that we can associate him terrorizing are black. Because he was like the beacon of like black excellence. That was the label always put on him, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. And guys, this is not just sex. All right. I'm seeing a lot of that online. It's butt fucking. It, it's more than that. That counts it's, as sex. It's, it's illicit rape. Um, it's it, it's coercion. Mm -hmm. It's it's trafficking. I know some of these things sound very normal to people. Like even sex trafficking. Like I'm realizing a lot of people didn't realize what that was, right? They just assume like, hey, you know, we're just having sex and then that person might be a prostitute or not, but there's no big deal. There's no problem. But it's like, yeah, the moment that you're forcing someone to do that, guys, that's an issue. That's a problem. <laughs> mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. As of right now, also at the time of this recording, Diddy is facing 15 years, a minimum of 15 years to life. Again, a plethora of things can happen before his trial, uh, et cetera. He's being detained until his trial, like we said earlier. So, um. A lot of updates to come, man. We'll see. It's, it's really sad when we think about what the people that we revered, the people that created so much art, so much, um, you know, 
the the, the castle of our uh, of, of personally my life like the first music videos that i remember it was mace and diddy yeah you know all about the benjamins that was they a moment in the camera like, like that I, I remember like that legit my first memories of hip-hop was associated with bad boy because in 99 in, in 1999 i'm five years old that's when i start developing some type of memory right and in my first music video i ever saw was mace in in, in diddy puff daddy at the time yeah right? right and so um to see his legacy fall in this way and then obviously we know about the r kelly's like these are not light names. These are some people that were really revered, really talented, and really had influence in, in, in on what it is that they did. And so to see this be the ending or what appears to be the ending uh, for people that we revered as legends and, and tastemakers and um, entrepreneurs and role models in some degree when it comes to business, right? Like how many times have we said or, or people have referred to or used Diddy as a verb? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? How Absolutely. many people, like, it was just a thing. That's so an it's really fucking, an, an adjective, yes, yeah. excuse me. Yeah. But it, it's really just, it's sad. It's sad. No, it it's is. Sad. It is. What else is sad? Um, heroes, speaking of heroes, speaking of legends, Shannon Sharp. We didn't talk about it last week. Uh, at the top of this episode, we kind of mentioned it a bit. Shannon Sharp she, she. is Quiet. a puppet. <laughs> Shannon Sharp is a puppet? I, I explain. Bro, when I tell y'all, it hurts me to say this. Because we see the rise, bro. We see the <laughs> rise of these people. And we root for these people. Like, I still, like, I root for Shannon Sharp. I really do. Yeah. And there's certain people that I just genuinely, genuinely root for. And when I see Shannon Sharp do the things that he's been doing over the last few months, but this was kind of like the straw that broke the camel's back, this fake sex tape, sex leaking on Instagram Live, it, it's not real. It's not. It's staged Wait, I, and it's I done would, okay. for the wrong reasons. My first question oh, was great. when I thought about it, <laughs> you know, I was great. first I was shocked. I was like, oh my gosh. But then I was thinking, like, do you know how many steps it takes to go on Instagram Live? So I don't understand how that was an accident. And All I'm right. not saying overtly, I know Savon's pretty set in his opinion, but like <laughs> I like, how could that have been an accident? <laughs> how I go live? I think it, it is. Exactly. I can see how. You know what? Go oh, we, we about okay. to go live. I, Actually, I can see how it's an accident. Let's, let's go, go live. Go okay. Page. So, we're, we're going to walk you out still for the audio listeners. If you do. touch the plus button at the bottom, which is where you upload something, right? Uh -huh. All your pictures pop up. And then at the bottom of it, it says post, story, real, or live. Now, I will say live is the last option there. So, I'm trying to think. If I'm in some pussy. And look, wait, hold up. There's a countdown, too. Yeah, but the countdown, is there a stop for the countdown? Listen. No, all I know, it's before we go live. This, we, we're going to record live while we record live. Hold on. So, no, before you got on the live, did you have to press OK? Yes. Are you sure? Like, all that. That's what we wanted I to had know. To but open he just went the, live. I had to open the app. Nah. I had to press the plus button at the bottom of the, the app, Instagram. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then I had to scroll over at least three tabs before I got to lie. I'm not going to lie to y'all, man. This is not easy to nah, do. It was kind of easy for me. Like, think, think about like your phone being open in your pocket, right? Mm -hmm. there, it could touch a bunch of buttons. I thought when you went live, it was going to ask you, hey, we're Are about sure? to go live. Are you sure? And then you select yes or no. I'm not going to lie. I just hit live and all it did was a countdown. Damn. It didn't say it was gonna stop. It didn't say, are you sure? It just did a countdown. So if I do swipe my finger all the way to that right side and hit live, shit, I could be, I could Alex. probably be in some pussy. Okay, you know what? Alex, I, okay, hmm? Hmm? You've been hmm? in, in your most intimate moment, yeah. right? When you're in heat. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You don't have the time to be scrolling left, right, side to side to determine if I'm gonna like it. Just happens. You know, so for you to accidentally go live, it takes a lot. That's the I'm, only reason why I'm, I'm doing nah, live. Come on, I'm gonna tell you why I'm gonna give him some some bail. Oh, we could. There, end this, there's actually. moments we don't need this. Yeah, we don't. I'm gonna need to know live. Sorry. <laughs> there, there have been moments right where, and I and I and I'm so grateful that they never actually occurred and happened. Where I'll open up my phone. And for some reason, it's at the post page, and it's ready to post the last picture I had up. Thank you. That's happened to you me. Ever had is that live? You ever had your phone? Mm -hmm. You ever had? Is your... that live? But it's on you the see? same cursor. But, but at the same, like we have all had, yo, we all had the phone in our pocket where like that's happening. Mad random stuff is happening, and you look at the phone and it's recording something. Yo, we all know Shannon Sharp is not tech savvy. 
<laughs> so I could, 55, I could see a world 56. where like he's doing bro, that my and then mom, my mom my mom don't know this shit bro how many people do you know and yeah. I'm talking about this specific case I'm not saying butt dialing somebody yeah. I'm not saying accidentally posting a picture I'm not saying any of that what I'm speaking to is specifically going live yeah but who I just, and how many times but hear me have say, you man. ever met anybody that has accidentally went Live I know on Instagram. A, I know a nigga that went live before. We Accidentally. Don't, we don't know him. Yeah, but <laughs> but he went live. But Ooh. I know the nigga. I don't want to put his business out there. I just know I know the nigga. Do you really know somebody who yes, accidentally went yes. live? I don't want to put his business out there because what went live was why he wished it never happened. <laughs> and what I'm saying is, bro, it's all in the same cursor, right? Like, like I said, right? I, by accident, I almost uploaded my last picture from my photo library. The post... The feed and the live is all on that same cursor at the bottom. So I ain't gonna lie, if I'm in some pussy, mm, Michelle, and then like my thumb, my thumb could just swipe how to did, that. How, hmm? right, you guys I guess, <laughs> I guess it's like it, it's a possibility that he can accidentally go live, but it's highly unlikely, but it's not impossible. I was just asking a question. Possible. Like my, all right. I don't know. All right, now let me ask this question. Yeah. When you end the live, when you accidentally go live mm -hmm. and you're ready to end it, yeah. How do you end it? How how would you pick up your phone and say, "Oh shit, I'm like like what is your what is your reaction once you understand oh, your life? Some level of shock. I don't, but, I know the, the, but speak to how Shannon responded. It just ended abruptly. No, no, no. I know, I know but, why. Because someone it, else was logged on onto his, his account, account from yeah. his team and ended yeah. it on his behalf. He said that on Nightcap. Yeah. Oh, that's why. So that's why. That's why. Yeah, admin on there. Yeah, admin on there. And he was saying while he was in the act of having sex, he just heard his other phone kept going off. And, there's a, and there's a log on live. I want to see if I can log you out alive right now. Let's do a live. Oh, yeah, need to know. Right, go go on, need to know. Go on, need to know right now. All right, bet. Say that. Right, you you go, go live on, need to know. I want to see if I could log you out of being live okay. on, need to know. And all then right. after this, I do want to hear why Savon thinks it's all fake and stuff. Yeah, because I feel like Uncle Shannon doesn't have a reason to really do this. But like, then we'll hear his we, reason. Like, he has kids. I think he has all of the reason to I'm going live right now. But why? We know he has children. We know. Hasn't he been married before? Like, is he trying to... I know people are trying to talk about his sexuality or anything like that, but... That's one. And okay, that's big. what's the other reason? That's though? big. But what's when, the other when you're trying to fight allegations... All right, so it says that you're live, right? Let's yeah. do this experiment in real time. We, guys, we are currently both... We both have access to the Need to Know account. I just went live. Savon is going to try to take me off of live. I'm going to try Let's to see. take you off of live. Let's see. So I'm on the Need to Know account. We're on the Need to Know account. It shows no indicator that... Alex is live right now. Mm -hmm. It right? does say nothing. You see it? Okay. It says nothing. But but they were probably sending it to his admin, like, yo, what's happening, Uncle Shay Shay? All right. Okay. No, but it should have shown up on his on Savon's end. No, I know, but that's but if people are sending the person that's logged in as an admin, yo, I don't know what you're doing right, right. now, but he's on there. So what I'm gonna do is Alex, yeah, you walk me through how to get you off of live right now. I bet. So go to oh shit. Exactly. Right, go to, that's go what I'm to saying. post. Go okay, to post. I'm gonna go to post. We're gonna try shit. I here. click post. I'm I'm in the post. All right, what live say? Go to live. Go to live. What live say? I'm on live right now. Click on it. Click on it. You're not live right now. I okay, just doing live. the countdown. Oh shit! So we both about to be live? So Ooh. I click live. Ooh. Somebody live. It says checking connection. I think somebody. Hey guys, we over here trying to see if Uncle Shay Shay was really lying. Now about you guys how are both on live. So now we're both live. How did it, we both did it log you out? Nah, I'm still logged in, y'all. Wait, so now save on log out. Oh, log out. So I'll close yeah. live. Yeah. Did it end your live? I just ended the live it, on my end. You know what's funny? No, but I just got a notification that the live ended on your end. Okay, but that... And, that and, and also, let's keep in mind, yeah. they stream Nightcap. When and, this and, is not Nightcap. Now, so this hear is me Instagram out. Hear me, I'm listening. I'm, I'm, listening. I'm, I'm taking you somewhere. We're hear trying me to see out, if right? Uncle Shannon was lying, yo. You can log on to Instagram through computer, and you can also sign off on computer. We Ooh. just did it. Ooh, but, but you did it. You did but it I'll say the this. Phone. I don't know what it looks like on the. Oh, she, he got a laptop do too. Do y'all really want me to do this? <laughs> like, come on, why are we? Like, we don't. Why, but also, but, this, I, this but is, why do you think that somebody? But why do you think but somebody Savon. just took the time to go on a desktop to but, log somebody out alive? Savon. The most convenient way for you to do anything on Instagram is through your phone. I'm with you, you think somebody said, "Oh my God, let me go on my but desktop give me, and give log me the reason. That's not the only way. Give me the real. Give me the reason why this benefits Shannon. If he did it, that's why I wanted him to. If he did it on purpose, the reason is because he he has an ad on his show night. Cap that promotes a, a sexually stimulating substance. Come a pill, on, don't a do that. Don't whatever do that. it is. No, listen. You missed yo, the yo, business. Yo, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna let you finish. Not only is <laughs> not only is he promoting a, 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 a company who promotes sex, right? Sexual activity, sexual health, whatever the case may be. He also the next day he went on live to address it in a way that I felt 
was very capitalistic. I wanted to tweet it, but I was like, you know what? This is not really who I am. So let me just get this shit off on the podcast. He also started <laughs> selling shirts, quoting, oh, oh that's Michelle. my Michelle. I'm that's my you. Michelle. Nice you know what I'm question? saying? Like Nightclap. capitalizing off of the moment. He started the nightcap shit with, yes. I'm embarrassed. I'm sorry. He said all of the things that you're supposed to say, and he but he lot, didn't yeah. do any of the things that you're supposed to do when you make a mistake, a quote unquote mistake like this. It was a publicity stunt. Can I He's ask a, a fucking puppet. He works for these corporations. I he can't, wants so to, I can't ask he, you what he wants to be in these rooms yeah. and that's okay. Stay that's home. your prerogative. But don't try to tell me that you accidentally logged on live, had sex. You didn't have any reaction to when you find out other than I was hacked. Nigga, we not stupid. We ain't 60 years old like <laughs> no. you. We know you wasn't hacked. Well, hold on. You He's can't Lie. He said he wasn't. He didn't write yeah, the that. The hack shit was a lie. But that was the initial yeah, lie. Yeah, that, that was, was a the, big lie. I'm with the, you. You know what that is? I'm with that you is on what that. everybody says when they are doing a publicity stunt. And it's like, oh my God, I've been hacked. No, he Can said I? that because this is protocol. We just also saw the Travis Kelsey and, and Taylor Swift quote unquote breakup doc file. Did y'all see that? They mm -hmm. broke up? They, no, there nah, was a was, script oh, oh, shit. of how they were supposed to break up. I didn't see that. And it got exposed by a credited source. Right? It wasn't real. All of this shit is, shit is staged. Can I ask and I think. Go. <laughs> Damn. So, I'm so glad you brought up the marketing aspect that he kind of leaned into, right? With the merchandise. And he, he does have a partnership with that company. I think the company's called Row or something like that. Yeah. But they promote like sexual wellness for men, right? Like, hey, take this pill. You might get erect. Save on. Do you think Row is paying Shannon Sharp more than Disney? I, I I think I think uh, it's kind of I don't. So then why Wait. would he risk his Disney no. job with ESPN and Stephen A. Smith? Mind you, no. you know sports. I know sports. Shannon is only at ESPN twice a week. That's Monday and Tuesday. There's a big part that so, we're all missing here too. By the way, mm -hmm. go ahead, Rich. Go ahead. So if this was staged, I'm just playing devil's advocate. If this was staged, then they all knew it was going to happen, and he wasn't going to lose his Disney job, which he didn't. He did not get any freaking well, hold on, no repercussions. repercussions oh, yeah, I, I don't say reparations. Yeah, yeah, me. There's, hold a, big, hold there's, hold a, there's a big part you got to say. Hold on, let me say this part and get to that. No, when he that says that, I want to respond to you. Okay, that don't tell me Shannon is aligned with Disney, Reggie and Savon. Why would Disney align with Shannon Sharp to be like, I ain't going to front you. We're going to do this little, this little um, PR play. To, it's Disney. I'm so glad you said that. What was your question? I, do, do you think that Roe is paying mm -hmm. uh, Shannon Sharp more than Disney is? My answer is no. But what I do know is that the Nightcap show is Shannon Sharp's show. Facts. Which means I'm an owner. So that money may be better than Disney's money. But if I'm going to bet on myself, if I'm trying to build an empire, if Shannon Sharp wanted to be on Disney ESPN five days a week coming out of that Fox controversy, he could have. But the reason he isn't is because he's still trying to retain some type of ownership and build his own media empire, which is why not only does he have Nightcap, but he also has Club Shay Shay. He's clearly trying to be an independent. He's trying to compete with the Bill Simmons. He's trying to compete with the Colin Cowherds. He's trying to compete with the people in his space okay. that are legit building networks. Okay. So if I'm going to take a risk, sure, I would risk my Disney check before I risk uh, what it is that I, I'm building. That seems to be working. What I, is more valuable? The, if that's what, the case, I got, I got let, let me let me ask you a question. Oh my God! Hold on. Let me just say what this is real more quick. valuable to Shannon I'm, Sharp? Save on the Disney check or Club Shay Shay. Probably Club Shay Shay, but save on. There is a reason why Shannon Sharp didn't fully go independent after his tenure with Skip. He was looking for a situation. So if you were right. Yeah, you. If if I if I see him do his own thing after Skip, you're right. I ain't gonna lie to you. But he looked apologetic, bro. He wanted to be at ESPN. Why Why wouldn't you want to double dip? He's getting the best of both worlds. I That's still, my point. So, he, so but if I'm order, gonna lose hold on, hold on, one, let me finish. Bro. Which one am I gonna lose? On. You got hold on, bro. I'll, I'll be letting you go. Let me let me finish this right because I'll be getting my door. You, you're good at this. Um, fuck. If, I'm, if I want to double dip in both, right? I still have to have both to double dip. <laughs> you get what I mean, bro? So it's like, I can't go full-fledged just on the club Shay Shay shit. If I really want to double dip, I got to have both. And he was just getting on Chad Ochocinco about professionalism and how professional he is and he's business savvy and all of this shit. That can't be the same person that would risk his opportunity with Disney. It can't be. It's not a risk if this is going to propel what it is that I really want, what I really love, to the moon. Yo, Savon, did you watch so the you Nightcap episode? Did, did any of you guys watch the Nightcap episode that I happened? Did. Keep, do, speak to do it. Do you remember 
Shannon said when it happened, the first thing he did was call um, uh, his folks over at ESPN and Stephen A and say, hey, look, this was an accident. I don't mean for this to happen. I don't believe anything he says. But but listen, can, can you not see a world where, let's say that, again, that happened, right? You can't see a world where an advertiser comes in like, yo, like, we want you to market this because of what happened. Do you, do you, can you not see that happening? I don't see a world where Paul Pierce gets suspended for being in the comfort of his home doing nothing illegal. Oh my God, I'm so glad And still you said being that. fired that's from different. his job it's from that's the same different. company than a man who is yeah, literally having so sex on bro. his Instagram live different. and not having a single repercussion. That's so different. It's, you couldn't see Shannon's face or the young lady. Yeah, and Shannon, and, Shannon, he, come he, on, yeah. Shannon came off <laughs> as, as having like a contrite heart. Do about not, the whole thing. Okay. Let's go back to Shannon Sharp's life. Okay. Right? Because the media, immediately after, you said mm -hmm. him and Chad, they got on and they mm -hmm. started talking about yeah. the incident. They called it an emergency nightcap. They called it emergency nightcap. Mm -hmm. That in itself, to me, when I saw it, it was marketing. Even the verbiage of, oh, guys, we got something to but talk about tonight. But you're supposed to lean into that regardless. For yeah. sure. All right. But if it was a true accident, I don't think he would have got on there and started bragging about, oh, yeah, you heard I went round. I, I disagree. Doing this. I think if he got the clearance from his job like yeah. at Disney after apologizing and realizing that, hey, his money, his businesses are not okay. at risk and they're okay, and it he'll, was he'll be more lighthearted but about it. Why is it not at risk? Because I just told you, you didn't see I his think, face. I, I do think it, it is different that he didn't see you didn't even see his face at all. It's just but audio. He literally, they confirmed he confirmed himself and implicated himself. Like, yeah, I was having sex. Yeah, online. but, but put, still, put that that's way in more inappropriate. So, and then capitalizing and all. Right, you don't so, think on, people we like live, in, we live in a, we live in the world of visuals right now. Okay, so when we saw Paul Pierce with a bunch of big booty strippers. And we know he works for Disney. Disney, who's a family company first and incorporates all the sports and such. People, because they saw a visual of it, it's like with the Diddy thing, right? We saw a visual of it. We've heard here say for years about how nasty he is. But when you saw the visual of it, it hits completely different. Because you weren't able to see his face. It, yo, Disney could have been like, yo, let's just chalk it up to AI. You know uh, Rachel Nichols? <laughs> Yeah, so yeah. Was Rachel Nichols. You know why yeah. Rachel Nichols got fired from ESPN? Yeah. Don't say Jimmy Butler. No, no, no. It was a hot mic, and she said something about, um, I forget the other. It, one, it wasn't Malika a hot Andrews. mic. It wasn't a hot mic. Yes, it was. It wasn't a hot mic. It, the mic was on, so how did we no, hear it? No, it was a phone call conversation that she had with another colleague about feeling like- Now it was a hot mic. It was I remember a hot mic. Well. It was. It was a hot mic. It was. Like, <laughs> the, the mic stayed on while she was talking about exactly. the scenario. Pia, <laughs> you mind looking it up? No, look it up. Not, I, I, yo, I remember that too. I just, remember. I just, just confirm it, it for me, please. Okay, That's what it was. I came from. But look it up for us, please. Yeah. It, it was It was a hot mic, it and was, Rachel didn't- it was, Keep on looking up for a second. Look it up. I remember her explaining it on uh, Matt Barnes. What's that? All the smoke? Yeah. All the smoke. I remember her saying, like, you know, I had no idea that- it was, it was on because they had just completed a segment. We'll confirm it in a moment. Regardless whether it was a hot mic or a private conversation, yeah. the context of the conversation was Rachel Nichols felt like her colleague at the time, it wasn't Malika Andrews, it was... Oh, it wasn't Malika Andrews? No. Some, it was about the NBA Finals though, No, right? it was about Maria Taylor. Maria, Maria Taylor, Taylor yeah. who so was sorry. now on NBC. Shout out to Maria Taylor. She's Got fucking you. beautiful and she's great at what she does. Yeah. And she was at ESPN and ESPN was leaning into giving her more opportunities because she was great. But at the time, Rachel Nichols felt like, why is she getting more opportunities? Because she's black. And I'm summarizing this, but this was a private conversation that she had. Whether it was a hot mic or a re recorded phone call, it was a private conversation. There was no visuals. She was in studio talking to another yeah. castmate. Castmate. Yeah, I remember, because they just had completed a segment on it. Yeah, Save that's on. what they were talking That's about. different, though. Let me tell <laughs> you But what. it's audio. There's no it's, visuals But it's that. a different sort of audio. That's, that's more like... I'm talking shit about my boss's audience. Like, if Shannon Sharp was fucking the dog child of Michelle, like, oh, Michelle, and fuck ESPN. <laughs> I'm sure ESPN's like, whoa, whoa, you talking about your employer here? Like, let's you remember that time, right? Yeah. We all knew that ESPN was trying to lean into having more black people as hosts, right? Mm -hmm. Especially in the NBA finals, et cetera, right? Mm -hmm. And we we don't know Rachel to be a racist, but there was way, there was way more around that. Like ESPN was trying to rebuild. What it, what it looked like at that time, mm -hmm. you feel me? So it, it's it's like talking shit about your boss, and they catch you. Yeah, and yeah, it's, it's a decision that they made. So you're going against. You're saying you're speaking against the decision that they made. Right. I don't know. Right. This isn't the point, but I just do think that Shannon going live while having sex, and then also confirming it that it was him. Yeah. And him not having any repercussions is absolutely insane. And not that I want him to be fired. Obviously, that's not what I'm saying. But it's like 
not no type of penalty or anything is crazy. What y'all want to happen, yo? I can't fuck <laughs> by accident. Want, like, I don't want him to get fired. Like I'm not okay. wishing him to be fired, but okay. it's like if this were anybody else, if it were a fucking woman, like he would, they would have lost. She would have lost her job. Like, I don't know. I, I, think, I know do you for think a so? fact. Like you think so? Yes. What, the I think, way that I think the general public it is Reggie, so inappropriate to be having sex on live and you work at ESPN. Like yeah, you but see him. you see the face. And, you heard it. And, like and he had. You could say AI these days. No, but it wasn't AI. He there said, "Yeah, sense, that was me." There was like, a no, sense of contrition, but before on, that, there was a sense of contrition when he was speaking about it. Yeah, you could, we do it all the time here. We talk about serious topics, stuff that happened, and then we kind of joke around the topic. You ain't never heard me fuck. I, I, <laughs> I don't think I, I don't think I'd want to hear that. Actually. Thank God. That, but that's <laughs> yeah. there, there's a difference, like talking about it. And then the other thing, going back to like why a lot of people have had strong feelings about it, mm -hmm. like we need to say this. And I know we're a very <laughs> progressive podcast, and we believe in love who you love, be who you want to be, fuck like, who you want, fuck, fuck who you want to fuck. Like if he is gay, it is okay. I don't even know where people are grabbing this from. He, people so, saying because he, he hopped that, out the suburban. He did he that to prove hands. that he's not gay. Yeah, but this is my whole thing, Reggie. When I see Sandra Sharp, I see a a, a Super Bowl winner. Oh no, same. I, see, I, I don't see, think I don't know if he's gay. I, I see a know. dude that had hit replacements. What you think Diddy see? <laughs> you know what Diddy see now. I ain't Diddy, so I can't speak to it, but you know. <laughs> know. But when I see Shannon Sharp, I see a dude in his late, late uh latter 50s with hip replacements. Getting out of, again, he went viral earlier this year because he he hopped out of this big body suburban mm -hmm. and he had the side bag on, he had the tight pants on. And I think that's where a lot of this rhetoric started and, about and, if he was gay or not. Yeah, and the, but, some of the people that he associates himself with. Okay, well, well, they said the stylist was his cousin or something like yeah. that. The stylist used to date a gay NFL player, Kerry Rhodes. Okay, but they you said familiar he was with cousin. the Jets. You familiar with the that's Jets? That's my man. Chill. Kerry Rhodes, yeah, a, legend, a legendary safety for the New York Jets. Why came Chinese? out Chill. after his career, he's gay. That's okay. It is okay. He had a great career. Shannon Sharp's close associate, close friend, yeah. stylist, mm -hmm. was the person who dated an ex gay NFL player. So you don't know gay people? I know a ton of gay people. What are we talking about? That doesn't mean it, he's gay, though. I'm not so saying, saying it means he's gay, but what the optics are saying is like, oh, every time you pop out in public, you're with this person. Right. And this is not me. This is what the internet no, is saying. People are coming you. to their yeah. conclusions. And if you keep hearing that, you keep hearing that. And maybe you aren't, or maybe you just want to prove that you aren't. Because the stylist that we're referring to, he had strong feelings about this whole situation as well. Oh, you keeping up. I keep up with everything. That's the need to know podcast. It's the need to know podcast. That's what we're here to do. He has strong feelings about this oh, too. What's that, what's that nigga IG? I don't know. I got to look that up. It's in my notes though. It is in the notes. I just got to look it up. He has strong feelings about the Shark actually. situation as well. Where okay. It, it, and if you piece it together, it seems like maybe he was alluding to this is some type of cover up. You get what I'm saying? Like, And I, I think at the end of everything, Whatever he does in his bedroom, it's like Dwight Howard, right? Dwight Howard is still embraced by NBA guys. He's on all these podcasts. I he mean, has these seven guests. Too. <laughs> you would too. <laughs> I seen him in person at my job. I'm shutting the fuck up. <laughs> that nigga was so tall, he was bending his head at the ceiling. But yeah, they're going to shut being up. Being 7'2 is crazy. Uh, well, he, I'm lying. He likes 6'11, but it looked like 7'2, right? I just think the theme of this episode going from Diddy to Shannon Sharp and now talking to <laughs> Dwight Howard, like all because of you. Just what you mean? And all it's all of because of you. That's a good song. Said it's That's all a great song. Your vocals really came out on that. I see. I see what you did right there. Hey, it wasn't nothing there. <laughs> but the theme yeah. of those three guys, in my opinion, like whatever you are, whoever you like, just just be that. And maybe they don't want to be exposed. So I do can't you, speak to are, that. are you saying? Do you think his kids were by force? Because again, the Shannon Sharp, I be seeing. I, maybe I'm just in my own world. I know he has kids. I think he was married before. You never heard of a beard? I'm like, uh huh. You what? got one. oh oh oh. I think I heard of this. this you never heard of a beard? But the context you're using it in, like. A cover up of sorts, like just because people have kids, just because people be married, like they be married men, but fucking men. Okay, but like just maybe because of, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. But maybe I don't, mean, you gay. I don't know. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> we go. We go. Wait, yo, I just missed that. We go. Yo, bro. What? <laughs> we go. Need to know. <laughs> I'm loving it. Yo. <laughs> I just want people to live in their truth. Just living their truth. <laughs> if that's their truth, just living that and keep it pushing. Like, yeah, man. Uh, yeah, man. Well, Nasty episode. Shannon Sharp, 
I ain't calling you gay until you tell us. I'm not calling him <laughs> that either, but if he I is... I just want to put that out there. Just be that. But what I will call him is a puppet. I think really? somebody... Yeah, I think I think he's playing the game at his fullest. What's what's I, the other I thing that's indicating to you that uh, he's a puppet? He doesn't explain... No, I'm he, saying he what's, what's the other thing? Yeah, because other than this, I will say this. When I saw my ESPN when he came back this week, because I was looking for that episode, I was like, oh <laughs> shit, how they about to approach him? How they going to look at him? Yeah. He looked very apologetic. I'm Even saying. at times, he looked nervous. I'm saying, like, I saw it. I was watching his body language. You know, the way he usually jokes and cracks on Stephen A. wasn't the same. He was more like a <laughs> yeah, Stephen A. <laughs> All contrition. Right. He had a he, contrite. He did not look like the Shannon Sharp that was arguing mm-hmm. with Stephen A. Smith since the football season started yeah. and since basketball season. I will be honest. I caught it. I was like, what the fuck? What's going on here? I mean, you gotta play the part. When, I, I'm well, not saying I think it's a it's he faked it, but I do think. It's a conspiracy. I'm going to end on this. You know? There have been times where I accidentally almost uploaded the beefcake. <laughs> Me too. Because when I opened up Instagram, for some reason, it was at the post screen. And that might have been my last hold on, hold on, image. I swear to you, bro. Hold on, hold on, hold on, I promise you. Hold on. I'm trying if to tell you. you ever did that accidentally, bro. I know. I we're not cooked. friends. This podcast you can't is over. No, so you don't want to support me. Mm. Wait, you don't want to no, support we've, me like we've this. Ta- we've talked about this. Remember Alex Colt says, what if you wake up and see my hammer online? Uh-huh. He said that like a year ago. And and I, I, feel, I feel like we were like. What's up? I mean, me personally, Good. I would just have to be there for my friend. It's a very stressful time. Hey, you. Hammer gonna be everywhere. <laughs> you feel very exposed. Be with me. Be with I'm not gonna me. just gonna abandon him just because nigga, he's in a controversy. Nigga gonna abandon it, me for something he got. It could go. See, nigga. It could go two ways. <laughs> You're gonna abandon him when he accidentally Reggie. leaks his nudes. That's that's our guy. Yeah. If he accidentally leaks his shit, yeah. it goes one or two ways. It goes three ways. <laughs> oh, it yeah. goes average. Mm-hmm. It goes many. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it goes extra large. Mm-hmm. Depending on those three, you might have to make a decision on how you want to associate with him. What as do you a woman, mean? As no, a woman. She as a woman. No, she do. does. She's still going to be my friend. Yeah, no matter anything. what it, the result is. Stop a boy. <laughs> you're supposed to this stick. Is gonna, I, I, this is going to be my friend. I'm not going to abandon him Thank during you. times of controversy. If your shit leak online, I'm going to defend it, nigga. Don't. <laughs> I am. Don't. What if it's like I a... Mean, never mind. What if it's like... Nah, I say it. Like if it's like a anybody, anybody, not just talking about mm-hmm. these gentlemen. If general. you if your friends, <laughs> yeah. oh yeah, let's put on anybody. If your friend's mm-hmm. penis leaks online and it's like a micro penis, mm-hmm. are you don't fuck with me? Are you like abandoning him? I'm don't gonna say that's me. not him. <laughs> <laughs> no, what? <if> it's clearly <laughs> him. I, like a tattoo. It, like a tattoo. Not in it, like Shannon Sharp. Oh, like a tattoo. Yeah, like that's him. Oh, I got a sleeve. So imagine my sleeve is in there. Nah, I'm a nah. Say I got the same tattoo as Neo. That ain't Neo. No, I don't. I got a whole sleeve. Now you do. I got a whole sleeve. Damn. I got a whole sleeve, gang. Yeah. Yeah. But no, I'm just saying, like, it's going gonna, it's gonna to compromise us a little bit. Nah, it ain't. It might improve. <laughs> Didn't you just say Shannon Sharp selling shit and he's successful? Might improve shit. Yo, on that live, they had two, I think it peaked at 200,000 uh, viewers on the yeah. first Yo, the anxiety. Yeah, let's say up. it's not uh, like a fake thing and that was for real. Yeah. I can't imagine the anxiety he's going through right now. Damn. I'm telling you, how was his on. performance? If you had to rate, he wasn't beating nothing up. I ain't gonna lie to you, Unc. Reggie. You heard I, it. <laughs> I only heard the beginning when he was like, Ugh, and then I clicked off because I was <laughs> uncomfortable. I'm not gonna lie. It sounded like she had fun though. This nigga, he was a tight end, right? Yeah. This nigga, well, was, he is a tight end. He. <laughs> Wait, I can't believe there is a position named tight end, and you guys just like. Mm-hmm. Just it's it not rock. silly. It's not silly to you. Nah, because right. fo- it's it's football. So like, right. we don't. What's tight about that? What's tight about that? That shit was <laughs> because they call. He's usually sometimes depending on where the other receiver is located. He's the end man on the line of scrimmage. But why is it tight? Why is not the loose? Because it's it's tight to the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Unless you have that makes sense. If, unless you have the tight end as the number two. So they're saying they have a tight butt. Hey. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna put it like this, man. Michelle was fucking him. <laughs> I didn't hear Michelle. I hope he, nobody makes put, it to the put, end put, of the podcast. Put that again. Put that again. Put it again. <laughs> put it again. <laughs> that shit was so quiet. Put it again, Michelle. Yo, I on, thought he was eating on. her out. Come on, Michelle. Yeah, come on, Michelle. I thought he was eating her out. I had to go look at Twitter for people to be like, oh no, he having sex. Those sex noises that he was oh, making man. wasn't natural. It was scary. That's oh. why I clicked out. I was His scared. sex noises was performative as if I need to prove I know how to get pussy. Like <gasps> he that wasn't you he was <laughs> really <laughs> No, that makes me think it's real because nah, he if was he was growling. faking it, he would have done a more stereotypical yeah. like male sound. But like, nah. he don't know a stereotypical nah, male sound. He, 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 he popped smoked in the pussy, you know? What? 
Like yes, he does know because he's had sex before. It was so. growling. But so, all right, we ain't got to stay here. What I do, what I believe, and going back to your question of why do I think he, and when I say puppet, I think he's just trying to climb the ladder of Hollywood success, notoriety, um, what he may deem to be successful, and which is, and we, we've we seen him, right? We've seen this ascension of Shannon Sharp, of some of the goals that he's had, some of the things that he says, some of the blueprints that he's following. Like, there's no doubt that he wants to be in that upper echelon of entertainment, especially in sports, and just media in general, because his biggest moment this year, which is not a slight to him, which is a fucking honor to have the biggest interview in YouTube history, is yeah. with a comedian, right? Yeah. He's an athlete. He jumped into the comedy world. Since then, he's had a plethora of comedians, entertainers, actors, artists. I don't even know the last time he sat down with an athlete. Maybe John Cena a few weeks ago, right? Like, yeah. He's, yeah. He, he's, 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 he sat down with Cam, too? I'm not saying he hasn't, but what I'm saying is Most recent. he has transformed into the mainstream into entertainment oh, and so when i go back to your question is why do i think he wants to be or why do i believe him to be some type of puppet or whatever the case may be i also think about when i watched the interview with him and tyrese and tyrese said yo everybody behind this camera is white where the black people at to me that's an indicator of oh but he's trying to play that game okay i'm not mad at what you're saying and i'll end on this i just don't think roe dick pills is the pivot or the hill to die on to ascend i don't i, you, I don't, really well, don't he didn't show his face in it, so maybe he <laughs> thinks it's like a low risk like scandal so and, then if it's low risk what's the point is <laughs> because it did it would work if a publicity stunt works so now, by the way i'm not saying i think it's fake i'm just yeah. like giving the other i'm playing devil's yeah, and if, i don't think it's fake. if ro like, is ro the company pills, right maybe like, when have we ever from? talked about ro yeah, no. Only, we, only I've seen other podcasts probably promote it, but people haven't really spoken about now? it. This but, is what we're doing now. So yeah. I think okay. maybe it didn't work. And sometimes you have to take the chance on the smaller company to build it up. So if I'm Shannon Sharp and I'm in business, if, if I own, and we don't know his splits or his percentage or his involvement with this company, but let's just say if he has some type of percentage or ownership in it, why wouldn't I put myself in a situation to where now I'm going to do something like this to bring exposure to this company? Because immediately after, what did I do? I went on and promoted this dick pill because y'all just heard me having sex. So if I'm an owner of it, I'm going to shoot the price of it up because that's more valuable to me than anything that a white man is paying me at Disney. No, for sure. I, and we don't know if he has equity we don't. in it. We Let's don't. be clear. Yeah. But we but, do know that yeah. he's in business with them. Sure. Absolutely. I just I, I just don't see the Disney just going away for no reason. I don't think so. It didn't go away. That's my point. <laughs> anyway, this has been great. This has been fun. This has been real great. It is late. Holy shit. Yeah, it's late shit. as fuck. That's why Shout I was like, why are you baby. still going? Shout out to like, Fergie, baby. Twins. Shout out to Shout Fergie, out to Fergie baby. baby. I'm so sorry you had to like yeah. be attached to this type of episode, but not My really because our conversation with Fergie Baby was tough. Fine. Ultimate Harlem's finest. I had a really Harlem. great time He's chopping great. it up with him. Um, If you made it this far in the podcast, like I always say each and every week, there's no reason that you aren't subscribed, that you haven't liked. Or even left a comment uh, below. Please make sure y'all stick around because we do have a conversation. Um, I, I don't want to call it an interview. I do want to call it a genuine conversation mm -hmm. because Alex and Reggie are very familiar with Fergie Baby. Fergie. I was reintroduced to the person of Fergie Baby, not just the music. Um, Alex, Reggie, I don't know if y'all want to continue to sing his praises because he was dope. Yeah. But uh, this iteration of the podcast is coming to a conclusion. Make sure y'all stick around because this interview is super, super dope. Yeah, Fergie Baby, Harlem River Drive North, out everywhere in your phone. Check this conversation out and check out that new music. All right. Hey, what up, everybody? Welcome to another installment of the Need to Know podcast. What you need to know, when you need to know, the Need to Know podcast. Today, man, we have a who you need to know. Hey. I think we got Harlem in the building. In the building. I think we do. I think they here. Mm. Huh? <laughs> See, that's what he was doing before. <laughs> that's what Harlem sound like. <laughs> um, what's good, y'all? It's your boy A, as always, the Paco Bone Poppy. I'm never alone, always with the posse. I'm a part of this posse, all right? You feel me? It's, it's, it's your guy, Savon, in the building, S-A-V-O. We got to throw the, like, this is a hip hop episode for real, for real. Honestly. It's a hip hop episode for real, for real. Yeah. So it's only right. I finished the intro with the essay, VO, and you got, you feel me? That's Kiss right there. You got, you, I can't you feel tell me? He likes the essay, VO. You get what I'm saying? That's Kiss. Like, that's all Kiss. 
It's not Kiss though. Oh, my fault. Right. I told you it's Fab, bro. All right, it's, that's all Fab. It's yeah. Fab, bro. F A B O. Yeah, he what, used to do that. I right, bet. My fault. Whatever my you want to do. That's you all good, Fab. Good. But, but Jada Kiss is out the J A D A. Okay, sorry. Let me stop. Right. Okay, so <laughs> it's me, Reggie, guys. I'm extra excited for this episode because not only do we have, you know, a music artist, but, you know, we've been friends. So we're going to get into that. But <clears throat> in case you guys aren't familiar, we have to my left, we have today on the show Harlem's finest. Fergie Baby, hmm. born and raised uptown, this talented ass rapper truly embodies everything about New York and is coming for everybody this year. <clears throat> Don't let his criminal justice degree from Penn State fool you because hmm. the truth and accuracy in his words are met with equal levels of creativity and confidence in his bars. And I mean it. He has some of the best delivery in the game, in my humble opinion. Check out for yourself because he has a bunch of projects out like Are You Done Volume 1 and 2, Baby Shit, his viral Truies, BBs and Canes freestyle on On the Radar. And his latest project, Harlem River Drive North, is out now. He's the truth. He's so, so talented. He's catching some head up in Regal. I stay well and out. I'm Steve-O. Hey. Fergie, baby. Welcome to Need to Know. Fergie. Oh. Oh. Let's tap it up. Let's tap it up. That was oh a fire intro. You know, I, Big dog. Where? I do do now. that for a living, so I'm thank you. <laughs> no, I appreciate welcome, y'all. Welcome, yeah, we are so, man. Thank uh, y'all for having me. Absolutely. Sure. Sure. Gotta treat people well when they come visit us, man. Come on, now. I feel it. Yeah, not nah, long time no see, man. On, it's been like it's been like two days, right? Oh, brother. You killed me with the two days, yo. Oh, brother. Where did you guys see each other at? We just ran into each other at the Rock Nation Fashion Week event. Yes. Okay. Shout out to um, Planes and Jay. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Sure. Shout out to Planes. Yes. Yeah. One Needs thing about outside. Yes. Very outside. Yeah. Sure. And we got to see the rest of the industry. And most importantly, I got to see Fergie in it. Let me tell you about Fergie real quick, y'all. Please tell me. You ever go to the party? Okay. Yes. And you got to force the fun, right? Mm. Where like the music should be the deterrent as to why you turning up and having a good time, but people when they're just not moving, body not shaking, mm-hmm. hips not going, shoulders not shaking. You know what I'm saying? People do say parties these days. Lack that essence. Absolutely. People have said that, I would there say. Was, there, was a, there was a down moment at the event. And let me tell you, as soon as Chicken Noodle Soup came on, <laughs> Fergie oh, Baby and Co. turned that motherfucker up. Gangster. Real talk. And I wanted to talk about just having fun in music. Like mm-hmm. It you looks like to. you still embody that, like you still have that. You have to. Where, where does that come from, bro? Come from where I was raised at Harlem, man. Like, you know, we was always fun. I was out before being an artist, I used to throw parties, you know? I used to do things for the community. Remember when so. actually people actually used to dance? Yeah, in the really though, like dubbing all in the parties and all that. Like especially uptown New Yorkers. Yeah. Especially. So it's still in me. I still embody that, you know? Nah, that's for so sure. If the vibe is there, we're going to turn it up even I, more. I saw chicken noodle soup. I saw Whoa. shoulder shaking. Very New York. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we was doing battles and all that. For Absolutely. That was there. Absolutely. Uh, I was. One thing that I love about just Harlem and New York energy in general is the confidence. Yes. You get what I'm saying? I, I watched some of your interviews, I listened to your music. And you just embody confidence. Yeah. Even your delivery on the songs, you know what I'm saying? Like Especially his delivery. Where, where, did, yeah. where does that come from? Like I said, going back. Just going I just feel like, like everything could be I'm, answered. I'm from Harlem. Like, <laughs> that's the thing about like, like, Harlem, like, like, That's but how they do. It's really that. Like, yeah, if you from that yeah, atmosphere, yeah. you just, especially your OGs that's, that's been in Harlem, mm-hmm. everybody had that. Like, we the home of the hustlers. We the trendsetters. We started this. So mm-hmm. even if you don't got nothing to your name, you, your energy and your spirit still carry that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so Fergie, that's, that's I want you to really speak is. to the people that never been to New York before, right? Uh-huh. Describe Harlem, the culture, that feeling. If, if you could put it in a sentence, right, how, how would you describe it? Um, it's just, you know, black excellence, black mindset, black culture, you know. Um, like I said in on one of my I just did I just dropped a trailer for my mixtape that's that's out right now. Um, you know, Harlem used to be used to be one of the black richest places for black mm-hmm. America. Black Absolutely. America. So we we still have that in our system to where it's like, what, we still we that. We that and we black. We proud of it. We embrace it. So mm-hmm. I think when you come to Harlem, you're gonna feel that from one tenth to one fifty fifth. From up and down, from one sixteenth to African Square to two fifth, mm-hmm. um, you know Malcolm X Boulevard. Um, oh damn, he know his. You know what I'm saying three fifth, four fifth, and then Rucker Park. Like it's just, everything mm-hmm. has a staple in Harlem where you feel black excellence. You know? It is so crazy how much culture that Harlem has, and the impact, and like how many trends and all the history. But it's only like a 40 block radius. That is so <laughs> wild to me yeah. because that's there's like the special. rest of the world out there but the trends are set in Harlem. Harlem and that's a radius. Fact. Well. And not for nothing, I, I, when we was at the event the other day, you know what I saw? I saw a lot of uh, love amongst newer artists Yes, in New York. Yes. And I feel like for years, we've always said that it's been Atlanta that have the camaraderie and they come together but when it comes to New York artists, Fergie, is it switching in New York? Yeah. Are people, the are New York is, artists starting? Yeah. Because yeah, we're tired of it. Once, once we hear it, like we in last place and you know the, um, 
nobody want to really pass the torch to us, so we're going to make our own torch, you know? Mm. And I got to give a shout out to where, why New York is now developing within each, within each other, like as far as the new acts. Cash Cobain is one of the Absolutely. ones to show and give us light for, to, to let people know outside of New York that we we the new ones, we and we together doing it. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, and he doing it on the positive, like he talking about females, he's talking about parties. So it's like, it's bringing a different new energy to the towns. You feel me? So, mm -hmm. Thanks. Speaking of new energy, so I have been listening to Fergie Baby, and I know when people get on the cameras, they love to lie mm. and exaggerate, but I have genuinely been listening to him for over five years. Mm -hmm. This is true. So, she was there. But I, you know, the beginning days, I know Steve-O, Who Ooh. Lit, those tracks and stuff, That's but crazy. on this one, let's talk about the new project. Yes. Harlem River Drive. The, no. the feeling that I got from it, it's an EP, so it's six tracks. Yes. It was a little more like vibey and like mm -hmm. for the ladies is that right or would you yes, say so or no for sure that's it that because the concept of that is just vibes mm -hmm. it's soulful harlem energy mm -hmm. you know i want you to when you on your way to harlem or you on your way over here and you driving on that like literally highway, play it play it while you on your way at nighttime in the car Ooh. that's that was my whole conceptual mm -hmm. i got vibe you. On that's a cheat code like, for you guys listening yeah, for the men know? just throw this project on but what was your favorite studio session would you say when crafting this ep do you remember or was it kind of all done in one bulk or like one by one nah. that was one thing was like really sessions. memorable mm. it was different I just pick one that's like super memorable i would say harlem river drive the when title track drive, yeah i love that the song. actual song it's probably my favorite on it yeah i appreciate that yeah and it just, what happened in the studio it, i did that on spot in the studio mm. like it wasn't written or nothing like i knew the cook and i knew what i wanted to say really? but when i was in the studio i really made it there that's fine. so it was like no i'm gonna dedicate this to harlem so i named literally everything about it in harlem i know that was, like, so, it was so i went to the projects man. i went to the, mm. the the places you eat the places you go to like yeah. and it's that that song meant a lot to me because i always wanted to do a track like that yeah. and this is the perfect opportunity for it and the tape is called harlem of a drive right mm. so i think that one was one of the most magical sessions mm -hmm. for me even though that you embody Harlem and there's a sound, there's a certain energy that come with being from Harlem, you embrace like a versatile sound. Yes. Right? Like I listened to your discography today and it was almost like a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. Like you had a, a real- Like a uh, fun one. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it, it, was a, no, but it, yep. it was one of those things where it's like, oh, he's, he's an artist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It ain't just, oh, I'm from New York and the stigma that comes with a New York artist. Like- I could feel the versatility. What allowed you to kind of embrace that in your music, in your delivery, um, even the people you collaborate with? Well, it started off just growing up with music, right? So I had my grandma listening to Al Green and Temptations, then my father listened to Scarface and Nas. Oh, come I on. was a Michael Jackson fan. Mm -hmm. My mom used to listen to Drew Hill, Donnell Jones. So I had all these different compilations of music to where when I actually started music as seriously as a passion, I was able to tap into different sounds and different flows. So it's just like me being an artist, I always take heed of that, like, you know, collaborations is important. Mm -hmm. That also opens up your sound and just working with different people to get a different sonic energy. And I just feel like music is, is fun. It's an energy base, right? So you want to show people your different vibe and your different energy as you create. So mm -hmm. uh, you might hear a song where I'm talking about the ladies or I might be heartbroken or I might be like, yo, I'm that dude. Or I might be like, man, we outside. Like, it's different <laughs> vibes. Like, yeah. you won't get from me because that's really me in real life. I'm going to give you everything that you need to feel. You feel what I'm saying? How, how important is that when you're creating music to have that background, being able to tap into an Al Green and just remembering like, yo, yeah. the roots of what I do, even though it's today, it's 2024, like my roots is really embedded in music. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. not just rapping a certain type of swag or whatever. Like I don't have to portray an image. I'm bringing me yeah. to what it is that I know. Yeah. Just being a student of the game. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's important. Yeah. That's super important. And super important. Now that I'm an artist emerging, like I want to be a student. I want to learn different backgrounds and different flows. Mm -hmm. And it's making me into a better artist sonically and mentally now. So you're being receptive. That's dope. You want to know how I know yeah. you're being receptive and how you're pulling from your upbringing? I'm listening to the project yeah. and I'm going, thank God this nigga not singing on the hook because that's how we used to do it, right? <laughs> Yo, yes, get a, get a real get the, singer right, on Reggie? the hook. Go yeah. get the R&B yeah, song, the R &B. Stress. You hop in your bag. Like, that's why we love the fab and Tamiya joints, right? Yeah, that's why we, we gotta love bring the, that essence. Yeah, we got to bring saying? that back. Yeah. F-A-B-O. You feel uh, what I'm saying? Oh, oh, my God. God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That was smooth, <laughs> saying, yeah. I'm just letting you know. That's it. We need all that. That's but, sense, but yeah. to kind of like piggyback over what Alex was saying, like, I do think that's super important. And, and not that, thank God we didn't hear you singing on the track. I know what you meant by that, right? <laughs> yeah, I know no, what you meant by that. I get what you're saying, though. Okay. Okay. He can it's, sing. It's the fact that. Sneaky, sneaky. I remember that song. I was playing. 
I was playing. Uh, <laughs> I was playing. <laughs> it's just the fact that you are able to tap into, look, when you need me to get on there and, and use yeah. my vocal ability, I will, but I know uh, when to play the role and be like, right. let me let me sit back and let the R&B artists do right. what they do. Like, that's what we're missing, for yes, sure. For sure. sure. Mm-hmm. Fergie, I need some studio rules. Talk to me. What are Fergie's studio rules when he enters the studio? <sighs> what cannot happen? What's allowed? What isn't? Yeah, because everyone, everyone is so different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. What's what would I expect to go in the studio? Obviously, first hospitality, right? Okay. Like I need oh. to feel at home and I need to feel good because I am creating. I am an artist, so mentally and my energy needs to be right. So it has to be clean, of course. The engineer has to be welcoming. Um, oh, no, nah, that's, yeah, that's they important. Rude. They be rude, yeah. That's important. I own, <laughs> I own that. a studio. You gotta make sure all the engineers yeah, are in tune. Like, clean, damn, smell, I don't good. Record Absolutely. Anymore. You know what I'm saying? The lighting Absolutely. gotta be vibey. Okay. Like if we could switch the lighting off, I like all red in my studio sometimes. Okay. So you feel what I'm saying? Um, a bottle of Henny, of course. You feel what I'm saying? Oh, Henny still got you. Uh, still forever. Oh. <laughs> still, like, forever. I slowed yeah, down a lot though. I wild. I used to wild out. People back in the day, especially like when I was in college, that was like the cool drink Henny. Yeah, but now no people are all tequila. Yeah, nah. But he's like, no, Henny nah, forever. I'm, I'm a traditional dude. I'm. I stick to what I know. You get there. Yeah. Yeah. You go. You gonna be on the rapper side. Don't worry. Yeah, nah, you gonna nah, be there nah. soon. <laughs> I drink it if it's no Henny or do. Okay. Okay. All right, yeah, I'm, yeah, not, yeah. I'm not a poet. But your go-to is still my Henny. go-to is whatever, forever be Henny. Okay, oh, that's why you. Honestly, that's why you were so lit at Rock Nation. All they was serving what? was Duce. <laughs> Wait, there, are they ball? both Kanye? Open bar Duce. Yes. Okay, the, they're both Kanye. Both Kanye. Yeah, yeah, both both Kanye. Honestly, yeah. I can't. Yeah. I can't lie. Like just like a Henny with cranberry and r- a lot of ice. It, ge- I, it genuinely tastes good to me. Bobby like tastes does. good as a drink. So I don't I, even I want no cranberry or ice. Give me okay, straight vibes. Never mind, never mind. He's like, no, 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 no. I wasn't saying that. None of that. I ain't mad at that at all. Not at all. Um, so I heard an interview, you say you've been doing music for about what, six years now? Yes. A little bit like six years. Six years, exactly. Um, you you sound truly developed in Thank six you. year period. Like six Thank years you. is not a lot of time. It seems like a lot of time to most people, but when you're creating art, six years is really not a lot of time. Like, what are one of the things you're most proud of in your growth within that six years? Because well, when you first like real quick example, yeah, nah, when me and Alex first started this podcast, it was about six, seven years ago, whatever. Yeah. <gasps> Same journey. Oh, so I hate Beautiful. Listening to those first few episodes, I wanted to lead <laughs> yeah, them off the internet. Like that. You yeah, get what I'm saying? That's the goal point, though. You need, you need it that. It is a little cringy. Now you guys about to say that. You need that. It's a part of the story. Do you? Yes, you do. Because, <laughs> like he says, a part of the story, and it's all your yeah. grind and your mm. brick by brick. My, like my first song, Bleachers, even though it's a smash hit, look where but I'm at. But that is now. a smash hit, though. You came out the gate with Bleachers is one of his yeah, biggest yeah, songs. Yeah, and yeah. Song. <laughs> but I'm just saying, in his aspect, it's just like from where you at now, going back, it's like, damn, I grew. And damn, I like. I, I don't like here, but now I, I accept of who I am now as a, as a podcast and doing my thing. It's like you need that. It's an elevation point. Mm. Yeah, and it's yeah, also yeah. give you confidence and motivation to keep going. For sure. I yeah. like seeing the journey as well, like going from your first episode to seeing now and be like, yo, look at our set. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's like, I do like that, but I think you, your first song was lit. Like it's good. You could play it today and people still love it. You could put, still perform it. But mm. in terms of podcasts though, I feel like it's a little different because yeah. if I listen to my first episode I ever did, it's like genuinely like a little cringy. And also in podcast <laughs> world, different. if you listen to your episode from seven years ago, like there's probably something that will get us canceled. Not going to lie. Yeah. So I don't know. Should we delete them? No, don't go back. That's what I'm saying. Hey, y'all, Let's don't delete go them. back. <laughs> this is not a drill. Okay, wait. But speaking of, you know, <laughs> yesteryear. Yeah. So we were, me and Fergie were about to speak about this off camera. But I was like, no, it's save it for, I want the guys to hear this. So for the listeners of the pod, I kind of say all the time, I'm like, you guys, like I've lived so many lives. Um, This, this, she this era this. that you're in now, that you see me now when I came on the pod was 2021. Wholesome, you know, not as outside. But Fergie, I met him in like 2018. Outside, outside. How was I? Can you just can you just vouch for me because I feel like people. I I feel like the guys and the listeners don't believe that I was never like. She a housewife to me. Like when I was like, yo, you know, she always stayed the same. Don't get it. Don't get it fooled. Right now, she's just a little bit more reserved. But she was outgoing, outside, willing to do whatever if it's fun and it's good energy. Say word. Come to videos, events. What? We outside. You was a video vixen. No, I, yeah, yeah. I want to say I don't, I don't like that. Yo, no, like, no, 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 but video yeah, yeah. does it have a negative connotation or something? Because no, no, I feel no. like it's an honor. No, no, no. no but are you were you a video vixen for real? Like, I mean, that was that not daily. what I did. Yeah. I've been in like three or no, four. So you're not yeah, a video yeah, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, yeah, I'm not. So, but, but you did your special pop up. She on the cusp. Three, three, three. The threshold is five. I think the threshold is five. I think ten. Ten. Okay. Ten to be a to be a video vixen. That's that's what you do. So what's three? Three is like, if I mess with you, I'm going to pop out. Like G League. 
G-League is geen loser. Ik zeg je aan. G-League is ook crazy. We zijn toch professional. En de EU was more fun, you know? Yeah, definitely more fun. And we already had a relationship. And she, she was, like, before anything, she was my friend and she was a fan of mine and my music. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it, was, it was a no-brainer. Well, oh, hell yeah, let's do it. Mm-hmm. Like, you know? Wow. What are you talking about? Um, everybody go look up Fergie Baby Steve-O video. Mm-hmm. I'm in that shit. And I made, I made airbrush tees for him with, with the girls' names oh, on them. He was a good friend. Like yes. I, I literally love his music <laughs> so man. much. Like, and I found you through, um, like genuinely through his music. Um, yes. there was this recap party video, and someone posted your song "Who Lit," and that was like the song. And I was like, "Who is this?" Like, I need yeah. to find him. And I just, yeah. I was just, I was just enamored. I was like, "Oh my god, his music <laughs> that is amazing!" That was just so admit it. And now, and now, you remember? I always used to post on my story. And then now, look at us. Five years later, oh, you're on the pod Fire. promoting Great Harlem River Drive North. Yes. Stream I'm so, it. I'm so glad we're taking a stroke. Oh, yeah, please, right now. Yes, yes, right I'm glad now. we're taking a stroll back in time. I want to do the same for you right now, Fergie. How did Harlem feel with the emergence of ASAP Mob when you were a little younger? Oh, fuck. Like, how did it feel? What are the streets for like? What, what were your friends doing mm. when ASAP Rocky, ASAP Fergie were just popping off? Ooh, I was in high school, I hate, too. I hate when... Sorry, I'm going to let you go. But like, I just hate when people forget that era because you know with ASAP Rocky now, he's a lot different now. People don't remember <clears throat> mm-hmm. and they act like they really weren't the coolest people on the planet at one point. Yeah, she's, she's subbing me. I forget. No, 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 you, no, 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 I'm being honest. No, not you. I forget. I do forget. So no. enlighten us. Okay, please go. Nah, please I mean, go. I was in high school, you know, like, yeah, so at that. that time, I was just I was still a music fan. I wasn't into music. I wasn't rapping. I was just school and ball. Yeah, facts. And ASAP came out and that was, that was a time, like, I'm in Harlem. Lit. Like, but, at that time, a lot of the Harlem dudes used to go like downtown to Soho. Yeah, LES. That's LES. Because yeah. that was the trend. That was the fashion. Even the Harlem, mm. like even them, the mall. They was in Harlem, of course, but their second location was downtown. So I remember when this is how I first discovered Kiff, Atrium. A- R.I.P. Atrium. R.I.P. Atrium. Good jeans. Couldn't you find them. No, oh, no. The Pyrex shirts. The first old Come white on. vibe. He's a R.I.P. <laughs> nah, because Atrium, if you knew, you knew, man. And that's mm-hmm. when Kiff was in the back yeah, of the, the back of Atrium. It was two but now it's like back. so everyone knows Kiff. It's mainstream. Yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. That's mainstream. Thank you, thank you. Good word. Yeah, man. Good Kiff, word. <laughs> but that was the vibe, man. Yeah, like, it was beautiful. Like, that's an old fashion tip, but as far as music, it, it definitely put a lime light on Harlem. Like, right. like who is these new groupie kids named ASAP? Right. You know, and they all had, they was all fun. It was all lit. They was all jiggy. That was the word, too. Right? Jiggy. Mm-hmm. Jiggy. Yeah. Yes. So it was like, that was a time. To wow. be alive. Wow. Wow. The Tumblr wow. days. Tumblr, yes. Yes, yes. Oh, yes that was the ASAP. Remember Glenn Brown before he started Shout really Glenn. managing? Yeah. They don't know. Cashing, <laughs> what was it, Elian? What was, was it, Elian? Ah, fuck, I forget oh, his brain. No. But it starts with an L. Shout out to Glenn. Him and yeah. Justin Sky, like yep. those are the Tumblr. Oh my gosh, yes. yes. If you know, you know. Mm-hmm. So they definitely set the tone that the, the culture forward going like with that. Wait for me. Because after, what was it? I'm thinking about artists after Dipset who on like on a global level people really identify with. Um, on, a, on an uptown scale? On an uptown yeah, scale, ASAP, yeah. ASAP Mall is probably the next one. Probably the next one's up, right? Like yeah. we got your Vados in the midst of things well, like I mean, that. Pro, well, that's, that was Brooklyn though. But that's pro Brooklyn, Alvaro, right. Joey, Joey, Joey Badass. Right, but. right. Now on the Harlem tip, yeah, the ASAP Mall is probably the next vibe. Come on. Mm-hmm. That's special, man. I was watching, uh, he did a shout out to our good friend of the pod, Armand. Yes. Stay busy. I was watching your interview shout with him. him. And something you said, I just resonated with so much. I just, I hope this doesn't come across the wrong way, but what you said something along the lines of like, yo, I've been making my music. I know it's so good. And we'd be listening to it like, why not? Why am I not bigger? It's like, yo, do you guys not hear me? Like, mm-hmm. why am I not? Do you feel like you're slept on still? Because the reason why For I resonated with it me. is because. Like, I just feel like, sometimes I feel like I'm really that girl, but people don't realize it. <laughs> and I, and I, I also, Coco Jones said this recently. She was like, sometimes when I'm auditioning, the casting directors aren't impressed with me, but I'm like, guys, I'm really that girl. I need you to realize. Do you mm. feel that still? Or do you feel like you're having a moment now and people finally appreciate you like you should, or they got to appreciate you more? It's both, but they definitely got to appreciate me more. Like, mm-hmm. I'm glad, like, the new, um, the new eyes is on me, the new attention, as it's supposed to, you know, because I've been had this. I knew I was him, but. They, everybody, more like people got to wake knew. up. Everybody got, everybody got to wake up, you know? Because <laughs> I don't think nobody like me. I'm, I'm providing a different type of energy that nobody is giving right now. I, sure. I saw a tweet the other day that um, said, one of the saddest things for new artists is that they had to turn into content creators. Mm. Do you agree with that? One of the, mm, no, it's not a sad thing because at this game right now, you have to shoot content for, uh, to, be a, to be an artist, right? So short form content is key for TikTok, you know, YouTube shorts even Instagram. 
that's how you know, and an independent game is is key right now. So you have to shoot your own content for you to get exposed correctly. So you're saying it it has to be added a part of the art artistry now by yeah, default. Yeah, that, that have to like. You don't ever feel like to. as an artist though, like, damn, yo, like I really know my raps. Yeah. Now I really got to learn how to edit and do this and that on TikTok and this. Does you ever have come to that uh that juncture? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's always a a transition period, right? Because it wasn't that before. So right. now that is. Is you have to do it? Yeah, I had I had a moment to where it's like I ain't doing these TikToks, I ain't doing it, but it's necessary right. because it's like that's your marketing tool now, you know. So if you don't do that, how are people gonna see you? Yeah, you know. I heard someone say it was like an OG. Um, I can't believe I don't remember who said it, but like a really established person in the industry was like, honestly, artists have always been content creators. They said them something mm. like that like years ago. So I I kind of agree with that, but mm. then I also think about like. Really, in 2024, if you want to blow up as an artist, do you really have to make content? Because you know there's artists that don't aren't like that at all. Like, they barely use social media, and they genuinely are just amazing artists. Do they really have to, like, have people always been content creators? Or I, mean, I don't know how part, I feel yeah. about it, honestly. I don't most, know. For the most part, yeah, you have That's to cool. do your own content. Like, there's only a few selective few artists that can go by and not... The mysterious play works, like a Playboy card. Oh, yeah, they're outliers. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, like, it's, it's certain people work. But for the most part, yes, you have to, especially as an independent artist. If you don't have no machine, you have to shoot your own content to be visible to the masses. Hmm. It so. sounds like your mindset changed. You said Hell at yeah. first you was like, nah, I ain't nah, really fucking with it. But now you seem like you embrace it a little bit more. It's fun. I, I want to give, uh, uh, I want to highlight, spotlight the aspect of having a strong team. You came in here, again, like you said, you and I, we got to get a little bit more familiar with each other, sure. tap in. Again, I'm tapping in with your music. I see Appreciate the motion. You. you got all that going. You. you know what I'm saying? As far as the personal relationship, the way you got with Alex and Reggie, yeah. we don't got that. But I always think it's very telling when people walk in a room with a group of people and everybody else is like, yo, I ain't see you in Mad Long. Right, yo, right, what's right, going right. on? You know what I'm saying? Like, we were all connected in some type of For way sure. or we've all met in some type of way before. Mm. Like, speak to the importance of being an independent artist, having a strong team. Um, how they kind of help you in this specific phase of your artistry. That's essential. Like, without a team, like, you, you at the end of the day, you know what you want for yourself, right? You always want to have the executive decision, but you need people that has your best interest, but also not a yes man. So mm -hmm. when you have people in your team that has your best interest and tell you, like, nah, you should do it this way, is it just gives you a different perspective of what you're doing for yourself. And the outcome may be a little, way, well, way better. You feel mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because now you have different people could tell you what they feel and what their experiences is. Like for my for, for my example, my team is, I have everything within my team. I have a graphic designer, I obviously have management, I have a producer, I have an engineer. I don't have to go outsource. I have mm -hmm. to, I can, and, and that's what makes us more, have more leverage with these labels, you know? Exactly. Like mm -hmm. now it's like, they wanna see you have that. So I feel like it's essential for you to get, shit, get things done when mm -hmm. you have a team. For sure. Like you have to have a team and a team that understands you, a team that knows their role mm -hmm. and a team that has your best interest. And that's hard. Those three components is very hard for mm -hmm. you to have a complete team because maybe somebody don't know their role. They don't even have your best interest mm -hmm. or they just don't understand you. For and sure. I and I had to go through that. Some like the hard way. Yeah, you have to go, you have I, yeah. I feel like every every artist, every creative, every entrepreneur has a time where they replace in seats mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. get things better internally. You for know? Sure. So that's a part of the 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 it's a learning process. Yeah, the process. And it's trial and error. Yeah. yeah. So, but well, it's essential though. It is essential, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Especially when you want to continue to do this. Yeah. I want to know what you love about the journey right now versus what you hate about the journey right now. You could be honest. We could curse. I think hell yeah. I've been waiting for your curse. Shit. What the nigga, fuck? Nigga, nigga, nah, nah, nah. Yeah, nigga, 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 I've been through some things. Mm. I was like, you can curse, you know, yeah, <laughs> right? Yeah, nah, you know, that's what made me really ask about the team. I thought the team looked at you like, you better not say that shit. Yeah, nigga, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Nah, they know what's up, but nah, that's the, so that's the thing I hate the most right now. Dick riders, man. And just like, <gasps> oh. yeah, it's a lot of Yeah, I just hate it. And because as soon as I'm lit, now the niggas that slept on me, now they, looking at, now they want to be a part of the vibe, you know? Yeah. Um, and we need I, those, though. Yeah, we do. It's, it's balance. That's true. It's a balance between like welcoming them and be like, it's like you a know? bench. It's a benchmark to me, at least. Like, oh, I'm, I'm right. here. I'm, 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 yeah, because yeah, the like people you can't that's what haters is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need yeah. haters. Got you. Got you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But that, I, I could say that's the most part right there. And then, thing, the best thing about it is, is, the, is the journey. I love it. Hmm. Like just figuring it out, trials and tribulations, like learning, sponging everything in, 
and just doing this shit is fun. Mm -hmm. Like, like one of the bad things too is when it becomes a job. Now it's not fun anymore. Oh my god! You know, so mm. the worst. I'm just grateful. That's the that's the thing. The people around me, good energy, and this is why the outcome it is what it is now because. Not only myself that I have, I carry that confidence and that energy. Everybody around me that I made sure is here yeah. is is all like, yeah, we we dumb yeah. and mm -hmm. we doing this together. Yeah. For sure. So that brings a different energy with all of us. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. so Speaking of um, just content creation in general, I always like to ask artists, what is some of the content that y'all consume outside of music? Right. There's podcasts, there's YouTube, there's TikToks, there's Netflix. These all these other things pulling at our attention. What is it that you, outside of the music, we know you you breathe, sleep, eat music. Okay. Outside of that, like, what are you kind of consuming? Well, like I said, I used to play ball rec recreationally. Well, I used to play ball for real, but I do it on the side. Mm -hmm. But as far as like an everyday thing, um, I'm starting to dip into like the fashion world. I want to do fashion stuff now. Like, you know, as far as like- Yeah, we see the, we see oh, the veil. Shit. We see the veil. Yeah, yeah. Come on now, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jim tips on my feet. <laughs> <laughs> Good feet. Nah, but for real though, like- Good feet. Also, you're from Harlem. You're, you're naturally stylish, I feel yeah, like. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, I love fashion. I want to actually do my own fashion line. But right now, I just want to do brand partnerships, endorsements, mm -hmm. um, more photo shoots. I'm starting into that world now. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it goes hand in hand with what I'm doing already. Um, other than that, like yeah, just music, play two K sometimes for sure. You know, yeah. you know the vibe. Need the two K. Why did you look yeah. at me? I, I don't think you play two K. Wow. Right. No, no, I mean, I don't. But nah, yeah, I'm just saying. I'm I, can like, yeah. I can say that. Like, yeah. <laughs> but, I just want to yeah. say, just while you're speaking, speaking of brand partnerships, let's manifest a G Shock uh, partnership, please. please. Because right. I used to wear that so much. I really Yo, thought dude. I was a fly. Mm -hmm. so I had a yellow right. G-Shock, but he's wearing it in 2024. Yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. And, and it makes down. me think about your recent record, True is BB and Kane's. Yo, where great well, time. Back. Let's take it back to high school. Like, uh, that's like right? the biggest thing of the year, right? Uh, I love how we had so much to talk about that we didn't bring it up yet. But yes, that's like the biggest moment of your year. Went I'm so viral. proud of you. I saw Swiss so Beats repost. Going crazy, going Watch crazy. The music. Man, guys, amazing. Please, if you, I don't know if you noticed, but I've been trying to gas off this whole time because I really want you guys to listen to his music. Please. Listen to... The no, watch the music video of that. The freestyle too, but watch the music video. Oh my gosh! Yeah, you have to take it back. Like, Cause I ain't gonna lie, that's that was part of the uniform in high school, I, right? What we had? Truies, nudies, uh huh, Robins, uh -huh. antiques, ACGs, Gamones, Constructs, Simons, uh huh, B from Broccoli's, you know, Maury Gators, Pradas. Um, I could go on and on. What like, was Lil Yachty talking about? I don't know what he's talking Stop, about. We're going to get mad again. Sometimes. No, shout out to Yachty. Oh, oh my God. We like his music. Uh, we like his music. He, he lost me with that one. He lost, he lost me with that He one. was just objectively wrong. Like, object. it wasn't subjective. It was, he was just wrong. Because we grew up in it. He's been going through some shit. It wasn't black and white. He's been going through some shit. He was just wrong. He went crazy. Like, it's not It's not an opinion. He's just wrong. Absolutely. And then talking in that in a New York attire. A whole New York fit. That lost me. Like, you don't see what you got on right now? The polo rugby. It was the red hair. <laughs> he brought the right hand. It was the right hand. Yeah. Because us New Yorkers, we remember growing up in that. So when we heard that verb, it's just like, dog, he hmm? went crazy. What's he know, on? he know he messed up. Yeah, he apologized. He Shout out to Yachty. So. Shout out to Yachty, man. Shout out to him. Um, this yeah, project you have out right now, right? Mm -hmm. I want you to speak to it. You said it's the it's it's the North version, right? Be clear. North, with, break North. it down for me. So I mean, Harlem River Drive is a love letter to Harlem, right? Um, it's a love letter to Harlem, and I just wanted like you know how Fabulous had his own soul tape. Yeah, I kind of wanted, I conceptualized that and made it my own. F-A-B-O, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Stop it's, giving him not, the opportunity it's, it's, to you do that. We give him an assist and he just laid it up. Like, he he laid it. Laid it. it. Oh, <laughs> fab, for sure. He had the series. <laughs> you know he did have the series. Okay, so that's kind of what you see this as, right? Yeah, like my okay. own, though. Like, I don't want to say I'm copying or just all for no, that. No, every but, artist has you. that, yeah, like, that's signature series. That's yeah, my yeah. inspiration. Like, you see how his covers mm. was the Apollo and just all these different yeah. staples of New York. Yeah. Like, my staple of New York to get to New York for the most for the most part is Hollywood Drive. So, welcome uh, to my world. Mm -hmm. Come to Hollywood Drive to come to see me. Uh, do yeah. you see yourself releasing music like Fab has over the years? I think Fab is one of the most intelligent people in the music industry over the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. Barely put out albums. He avoided mad parties. I don't know. But shout <laughs> Wait, uh, what do you mean by that? <laughs> You it, cut it out. No, nah, he, 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 he said he was uh, one of the smartest. He was, so he, intelligent. That's, that's foresight. That's Not, all? Super foresight. Real talk, right? Like, or again, we just remember the truth. <laughs> fucking up my face. This nigga's crazy. I'm telling you. This nigga's different. Perfect. See, Still what you got to know, this is how yeah, it is. Yeah, I see, I see. You see I the see. nigga, right? Watch this nigga. <laughs> <laughs> is he 
even before the camera started, he's always like, you know, oh, how are you doing? But right. this, this is the real one. Yeah. But do you want to like EP him to death? I'm, I'll tell you. Nah, EP him no. to death? I, no. First, I'm going to no. tell you what I tell new artists. I'm going to keep it a buck. But you kind of in a different um, category. Position. Because, yeah, different position because yeah. you've had records that have already taken off yet. I tell him to single these niggas to death. Wait, is that good? Mm. When, I don't, I don't know. I'm not see, an artist, but like, I don't know. Is that, I just say do the good? single momentum until you feel like the album, the the tape is ready. I feel like okay. singles is like obviously building that anticipation, but it's also for me a strategic way of stalling them, mm. like <laughs> cooking up for the bigger meal. You are. I see what so, you're saying. That like, makes sense. It's funny because a, a few years ago, I remember Russ was talking about one of his strategies was dropping a single every single week. Yeah, it um, worked for well, yeah, 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 something like that. Um, it it kind of works. That's tough. That's tough. That's okay. tough. Okay. I right. don't know. As a consumer, I don't really like that. Like so many singles, I'm like, all right, like because they all live by mm. themselves and they're all so right. scattered. It's a good point. I don't know. I just love. I love a good See, project. I love. A project. I'm glad you said as a consumer. If I'm an artist, though, I'm thinking about retention, right? And so you do a really good job of re-promoting your songs and promoting them as long as they need to live. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of artists don't do that, right? Like they right. put out the project and they'll probably promote for like two, three weeks. And then, if unless it went everywhere, most people are not really going. Nah, back I was to like it. that. It took a team for me to realize, like we first of all, we create a marketing plan, so we know when to start and cut off the the the, the promotion and, and on our and then work on the next single or the next project. Oh, he got so, a team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because nah, I was <laughs> yeah, heavy yeah. on. Oh, I'm gonna drop this video next week. I'm I'm done. I'm not. I'm about to share the same clip over and over. But yeah, yes, it's not you have sharing to. the same clip. Now you're just doing different content for that one song. Right. So mm-hmm. that's how you keep them spent. Like you know, keep them still eating off the shit. Like, exactly. You know what I'm right. Right. Because when you put when you make a project, make an album, an artist puts a lot of work into it. And I'm gonna be honest, man. If I make a 20 track album, y'all niggas better sit down and listen. Yeah, 20 track. That's albums, how, you know, I don't know if I ever do that. Really? What's your max? What do you think your max is? Like 13. I, Ten, ten, the most, the most I ever go. I feel like in my music career, I'm the most I go probably sixteen. I like that. twenty is crazy. I might, I might, if we crazy. do twenty, it's this extended version or a deluxe, yeah, or it's that type of energy. Like, I hope you, you stand on that because yeah. the industry seems like they're pressuring artists to do the Chris Brown. But why? <laughs> Because streams. like what he said, retention. Retention is right? At the end of the day, I always like yeah, to give this example. But we got short extent attention span. At the end of the day, we mm-hmm. could just give them ten and ten. So mm. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a counter argument just mm. to that, right? The Chris Brown situation, he did 40, 50 songs, right? That was Out of that 40, 50 songs, me personally, I took about 12, 15, and I made my own situation out of the 40. So the album and the algorithm, because I'm sure as you know, as an artist, like we're fighting against the algorithm too. You're yeah. fighting against the algorithm. You're fighting against the YouTubers, the TikToks, the politics. Like yeah. even though we have our own aura, our own motion and our own lane, we are still fighting for other people's attention, essentially. You know what I'm saying? So I could see people trying to pressure upcoming artists, newer artists, mm-hmm. on saying, yo, we need more, 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 more. When the ever we come from is like, no, I'm going to give you the best body of work that I have. Y'all are going to love it. And then just keep it there. So I hope you do keep that same mindset. Like, yeah. no, I, I like 16. This feels good for me, yeah. which I think will be good for the people that support me. And yeah. no skips. No skips on it. Every song no is a skips. hit. Yeah. yeah. And like I said, if you want more, just drop a next album the next month. Mm-hmm. That's it. Mm-hmm. Like, well, I'm not about to give you 20 and one. Yeah. Like, yeah, I feel yeah. like that's also burning me out too. Like, yeah. you unloading the clip too fast. Like, mm-hmm. how do you how do you feel about um the people who just freestyle on Instagram still? What you mean freestyle? Like, just dead freestyle? Just, they'll just put up the camera. And just freestyle in the car. Are you thinking about something specific? Some people it works for though. No, yeah. who are you talking about? No, nobody. Yeah, well, <laughs> no, no, I swear. On everything I love is I have nobody in particular. I just thought that maybe that's phasing out, right? When it comes to retention, right? If I'm scrolling down on my phone and I just see because that was repetitive. That's all we saw for a while, right? Yeah. Just pull up the phone, just freestyle, whatever, and then it converted into bigger freestyles, right? Like whereas, like now we have some like on the radar, whereas like yo, it's current, it's trendy, it's young. All right, when people think about freestyles, they're thinking about something that's more elaborate now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, do you feel like that's still effective? Like, just yeah, it's effective. Yeah. It depends on what artist you are too, right? Because there's a lot of artists that still that method still works for them. Like, it it really depends. Like, I, I'm not gonna sit here and say like it don't work or just people got to stop because to this day, freestyle platforms works for for mm-hmm. certain artists. Right. Mm-hmm. You know? Well, I just don't like that because now sometimes it's based over we in with social media, it could box you in as an artist. Mm-hmm. And that's so kind of what I was speaking choose. to. Right. You have to pick and choose. Because now oh. when, it, when a fan is, when they, whatever they remember you for is, oh yeah, he always put the freestyles yeah. like the freestyle on his artist. IG. Opposed to you yeah. doing like three freestyles a day and uh, three freestyles a year and it's right. like, 
and you kill all three of them, it's like, damn. damn. Now they looking for it. I can't wait to hear the exactly. Like, oh my god, just like yours. Yeah, yeah. That's, but that, I had to train my view, like mm-hmm. my people, for that. Right. Like mm-hmm. y'all not about to see me on these freestyle platforms. I, I, y'all know I can rap, Fast. but I want y'all to feel it. Like when I do hit a platform, it's like, oh, like get ready. Yeah, because mm-hmm. it's something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, I like you know? that too. You're not afraid to really show energy or no, yeah. and flex mm-hmm. your voice or change the cadence. Fluctuate. Yeah, yeah. Fluctuate. Like mm-hmm. we used to get a lot from that from Buster Rhymes, Missy Elliott. Like you do the same thing. Yeah, for sure. And it separates you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's fun too. Like, I could do whatever. I could go to whatever genre, whatever vibe, and I can have fun and still, you can still hear me. I can still feel my energy. For sure. I could, we're gonna, do, I could do slow, I could do fast, or whatever. We're going to be hearing you everywhere. You guys remember this interview, but In we've done it this. again. We had a time slot and we could not stop talking because there's so much to talk about. Uh, yeah. That's it? Oh. See, it's a little bit. So much I don't so want to do it, but you know. So much yeah. Yeah. Right. Yo, you want to pull up too? We're just nah, getting yeah, yeah. started. Please. Okay, but okay. literally, we went way over because we just yeah. love speaking to you. Nah, but you know, nah, we're not going to we're not gonna just cut you off like that. But you know, how yeah. are you feeling? What's next, please? Your last words. Just manifest some things right now. The floor is yours. Well, Harlem River Drive North is out right now. Can we out get a... right now. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Like, can y'all clap it up? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, man. Ferg Baby Harlem, baby. It's a lot in store. I got a lot of projects about to drop. Y'all just got north. You're about to get south. Y'all might get something else after. Ooh, but we got a lot of projects, a lot of shows, big shows coming up. We just manifesting it. And as a manifestation, I'm going to be a, I'm going to be global, man. Just of not course. as an artist, as a, as a mogul, as an entity, as a brand. Um, sure. I love that. Harlem yeah. need it. Yeah, the yeah, game need it. Need it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. The no, for real. Yeah, like, I'm so I'm serious. We, yeah. we, 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 we do need that. Like, yeah. ASAP, yeah. ASAP is in billionaire world with a billionaire yeah. girl. Alex, you got billionaire boys club. <laughs> a lot of niggas from Harlem join, join that's, that. That's crazy because 27 Deli, ASAP Ferglo, yes, brother, he's, he's a new brand ambassador for billionaire boys club. You get what I'm saying? That's crazy. Wow. We bringing everything It's all happening. Like, it's all happening how it should. Wait, we that's it, man. We, That's beautiful. Much love to y'all. Absolutely. Thank y'all for having me. Yeah, and of I course. Have, great interview, by the way. I'm glad you had fun. We're going to come back to my next project okay, when sure. it really Good. makes sense yes. and we're going to turn up. The, thing with, us, <laughs> <laughs> the, the thing with us is you don't even need a project to pull up. Yeah. 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 You know what I'm saying? We can talk about like, topics yeah, too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, let's come. Yeah, next time we could just talk. Today, though, today, though, it was about music. It was about music. We definitely wanted to make sure we we emphasize the music, but there's also a lot of things in the news we ain't want to. Actually, about <laughs> yeah, that's it. So that's really why we had to cut yeah. it the way that we did. Yeah, but man. thank you for pulling yeah, up, bro. You, right. hey, it was, it was a pleasure meeting Yo, you. Thank you for right. sure, Fergie baby. Harlem oh, Roller Drive from Harlem, right now, out now, everywhere in your phone. See, y'all need to know, family. Peace.